Last week, I want to apologize to leaving. Um, I'm still not fully recovered. Um, been out of the doctor's care the last three months. I just want to thank you, all the community members and board members that called and, and, and the prayers and the love that you um, gave out to me, and I appreciate it. And um, like I said, I apologize for leaving abruptly. And uh, well, let's go on. Thank you guys for the prayers. Okay, um, let's go with the introduction starting with you, Tom. Aloha, Tom Burke. Mary, thank you for coming. Roger Lopesta. Sandy Arikaki. Hello, welcome. Thank you for coming. Kobe, thank you. Noah Fine, Neighborhood Assistant. Um, I was told by um, the CMB, you guys could you guys use the mic. I've been having complaints about the audio. Appreciate it. Okay, Kurt Fidela. Celeste Lopesta. Use the mic, please. Sorry. Mitchell Tananis. Celeste LaCuesta. <coughs> Steve Allen. Okay. Filling the or vacancy, one at large. <coughs> yeah, any uh, nominations? For <coughs> more vacancies. Is Hen Henry Changos here? I guess he's not here. How about Ariel? Well, we can do, uh, if the board members don't mind, we can defer it to our next um, at, um, regular scheduled board meeting since um, these people are not aware. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to volunteer to be on the board? Chickens. Thank you. Okay, at this time we're going to close the, um, hmm? the um, I guess. Excuse me, Joe. Yes. Well, we still can vote on uh, Henry or Ariel tonight. They're not friends Well, they got to be friends Okay, I was, yeah, they don't have to be uh, present. No. Okay, then in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and nominate Henry Changwell. Um, Glenn has a question there. Okay, go ahead. Mr. Chair, and members of the board, um, it, it'd probably be demeaning to me, but but I haven't uh, sat on the board since the, the, the late 80s or the middle 80s. But I, I, I think there's a, there's a big concern in this area about uh, the impacts. And, and I feel that there should be somebody that uh, uh, is knowledgeable and up to date on what's happening in this area. And uh, you know, I, I, think, I think it'd be uh, demeaning to my, to my intelligence to sit behind that table since nobody come forth, uh, I haven't sat on the board for going on 20, almost 25 years, but uh, uh, I volunteer to sit on the board. Okay, I'll go ahead and nominate Glenn Omelda. Discussion? No, do we have discussion? No. Kona Purdy. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Steve, you got a question? No. No question.
Chair, Chair Solero, can I move to close the nominations? Okay, so moved. Can I close the nominations? I had I had um, I had nominated Glenn um, because of um, just for the respect that um, Henry and Ariel is not here to represent themselves to see if they want to be on the board because in the in the past they had you know declined a position right? I'm pulling those nominations. I'm pulling those nominations. Um, Henry and Henry Chang Rule and Her Ariel. Second to close. We have two nominations, Glenn Milda and Andrew Purdy. <coughs> uh, Glenn, so let's, oh, he goes this way. Since Steve nominated Purdy first, we've got a roll call in that order. Glenn so. Glenn is here again. Okay, roll call, Sandra Arakaki, Andrew Purdy. They will, will they don't have to uh, present themselves and, and declare on why they want to be on the board? Uh, point of clarification, Mr. Chair. You know, um, it, it comes to my attention that, you know, you guys are looking for volunteers, and the people that you guys nominated are not here. So you know what? Yeah. If you're going to vote on somebody that's not here, I withdraw my name. If you're going to do it in, in, in that order, you know, you know, come on, let's, let's, uh... That's right. That is, that is definitely true because, uh, what is called about the changes, excuse me, the changes that were made last year, you know, and uh, it's not the same thing. You guys squabble over it. I will draw my name. To nominate. I feel that it's not right to nominate someone when they're not presently here at this time because there are situations that they decline the position. So it's better to have to nominate someone that is physically here, you know, and that's only right. Yeah, I, I would suggest that this board wait. We, we've gone several months at a time without nominating or voting on, on a replacement. Having only one replacement tonight who uh, happens to be the most disruptive uh, person in the room, in my opinion. I think we should have at least a couple choices for the board to pick from, and we should hear from those choices that are interested. So I would make a motion that we postpone until the next meeting, and then people that want to be on the board can be on the board, can run for the board. Okay, well. Okay, um, Second. Second. Yes. 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 Yes.
It'd be a travesty to have no one to vote on except for Glenn. So we need more people here that would like to be on, and we need to hear from them. So I, my motion is to, to have it at the next board meeting. Can I get a second? Go ahead, Brian. Paul. If someone were watching this or reading this and didn't know who Mr. Community Member was and was faceless and saw how this membership approached this, because the rules provide just that, rules, and there is a process to engage them. Do I have a second? Okay. Yes. Okay, roll call. This is uh, to move it to next. Motion is to defer until the next meeting to fill the vacancy. Okay, Sandra Kaki. Okay. Tom Berg. Abstain. Mary Chanel Benjamin. Abstain. Kurt Favela. Yes. Steve Nauer. Yes. Celeste LaQuesta. Abstain. Roger LaQuesta. Abstain. Kobe Lynn. Yes. Mitchell Tinan. Yes. For motion fails, five ayes, no nays, and four abstentions. Chair, can you speak, please? Go ahead. I think I'm confused with the nominations. There were four nominations? No, and Celeste, Celeste uh, pulled two. Pull, pull two or three? Is Kona here? Yeah, I was uh, told by Rex Pinion. Okay, Mara. If, I think if, so f three got pulled from the nominations and that left only Mr. Omelda? Omelda, yes, correct. Does the board wish to vote him on by acclamation since it's just one nomination? Yeah, um, and can one let Mila Cole clarify what she just told me earlier when the nominations was made for the first two that wasn't here. I had asked her earlier, so she explains. You don't have to, but they're preferring to have next meeting everyone present but the vote moved. failed yeah so can i move to accept his nomination by acclamation okay but there's that's not only um him over there i want to try to explain that nola was trying to explain earlier when i told her that these gentlemen weren't here she said that they didn't have to be here so it was continuing on into um, mr omilda had stepped up and then she had me count her to, okay, hold on. Okay, go ahead, uh, Steve. Yeah, it, it's, it's my taking, and I could be wrong, but it's my take of the plan that it's a simple majority that rules to defer, you, to take it off in, in general, you might have to have like a two thirds or something like that, but it's a simple majority to defer something like this. Tessa also says it's right and she's, so we need to take a vote on Mr. Omelda. Yeah, I know he did. I there, know, but there's only yeah, one nomination. There's only one nomination, actually, because uh, that, uh, wait, no, well, he just withdrew. Oh, okay. Then, then we got to so There's only one nomination. If he, if he withdrew, oh, can you clarify? Hold on, hold on. Back up front Wait, hold on. Uh, hold on. I, I, I'm not I'm trying to get in touch uh, Marie. Miss Richardson? Point of order. Are you addressing me, Mr. Chair? No, well, not right now. We're in discussion. Point of order.
Point of order. Okay, go ahead, uh, uh, Steve. Yeah. On my motion, my motion carried by majority, and so it should be deferred. And Tess is back there in case you want to ask her. And Nola can check if she if she would like to. A deferment defer of a subject is a simple majority. Um, excuse me, I think the motion failed, so we should vote on Glenn, since he's the only he's the only one. We gotta vote on it, but it failed to defer. Again, when we voted, it was five, and how many people were left over? Four. The, it, motion carries. No. Simple majority of people are here and defer. Ask Tessa. Majority of board members. We always sit with majority. Four. We did six. We did six. Ask Tessa. There's somebody here from the Native Simple Majority Board Commission. Okay, Can I move to nominate and vote on Glenn? A second. Okay, Mr. Tanani, this is to vote, Mr. Milda. Okay, and then, um, okay, I understand that, but what the clarification was earlier, regardless of the person's presence, I mean, if it's only going to be, I mean, it's already adamant that they want to take the vote, so, I mean, regardless if the person is here or not, um, if Mr. O'Milda didn't step up, I'm pretty sure we'd be taking a vote right now on Ariel and Mr. Henry, Uncle Henry. So um, to me, I just think to be fair, vote on both of them, whether they're here or not. That's what you told me earlier. Well, I think we should vote on Glenn since Glenn is here. Let's vote on Glenn. Mr. Milda, so do you want to be on this board or not? Because you, you openly stand up, come up to the mic. You openly said you didn't want to be on the board. Look, you asked me to my clarification yes. again. I told you, because he asked for a volunteer and nobody yes. volunteered, so I stepped up. Yes. And then now you guys play this kangaroo court thing, and you guys every, got everything in a disarray. So you know what? I'm kind of sick and tired of trying to disarray. Are you guys going to make a decision on oh, what or not? It is up to you, Mr. Milda. We made a motion and we, made a, we, and we second that to, to have you on the board. That is Excuse me, let's call for the vote already. If you want to be on the board. Uh, yeah, yes or no. Yes or no. Yes or no. Do you want to be on the board, board. Glenn? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you. Roll call. This is voting for Mr. Glenn O'Milda to fill the vacancy. Mr. Tananis? Kobe Lim? No. Roger LaQuesta? Yes. Celeste LaQuesta? Yes. Steve Nauer? Absolutely not. Kurt Favela? No. Mary Chanel Benjamin? Yes. Tom Berg? Yes. And Sandra Arakaki? Yes. And Marcy McGuffin. Oh, she's here. I'm sorry. Hi, Marcy. Marcy Nagata. Welcome. Motion passes six to four. Thank you. All those on the right, thank you. And the left. <laughs> and the Lord. And the Lord. Okay, can we get the Honolulu Fire Department? Good evening, Chair, uh, Chairman, Board Members, and uh, residents of Little Beach. Here are the statistics for the month of October 2009. For fires, we had one structure, 
two wildland fires, eight rubbish, one vehicle fire. Emergencies, we had 80 medical calls, one search and rescue, and 29 miscellaneous. A fire safety tip for this month is this holiday season, consider a fire resistant artificial Christmas tree. If you purchase a natural tree, choose one as fresh as possible. Keep it hydrated and keep it away from heat sources in the house. Use non-combustible materials for decorations. Choose only underwriters laboratory approved electrical decorations and follow manufacturer's instructions for installation and load. Do not overload extension cords. Holiday family gatherings often include extensive food preparation and visiting guests. As a significant portion of home fires originate in the kitchen, do not leave cooking unattended. Have an ABC rated fire ex extinguisher available near the kitchen and learn to use it. Turn off the heat if you must leave the stove, even if only for a few minutes. Never wear long, loose sleeve clothing while cooking. Turn the handles on pots and pans inward to prevent accidents. Keep children away from the kitchen. If you are hosting overnight guests, share your home escape plan with them, including your designated meeting place outside the home. Any questions? Any questions from the board? Not anybody from the community? Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Honolulu Police Department. Good evening, uh, board members, uh, members of the audience. I'm Lieutenant Michael Johnson from Honolulu Police Department. Passed out copies of the uh, crime statistics for the month of October 2009 to the board members. If the audience members would like it, it's up here on the table to my far right. The community police team message of the month is uh, just a re uh, reminder that the holiday seasons are uh, coming up and uh, just to remind everyone to please drive safely and drive smart. Uh, buckle up when you're driving. Don't use your cell phones. Don't speed and do not drink and drive, please. And on behalf of Major Michael Moses and the men and women of the District 8, uh, have a safe and happy holiday season. Any questions? Anyone from the board? Community? Thank you. Okay. Happy holidays, everybody. All right. Uh, we didn't see Sergeant Namoka. Uh, Major Namoka, I'm representing uh, Evo We Didn't See for HPD. Chairman, board members, community. Um, the stats have been passed out. The community wants a copy. I've also left copies on the table. I'll en entertain any. Any, any questions please. from the board? I do. Yes. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> you know, for Oniola Park, Oniola Park. Habosh. Habosh. Okay. I understand that you, uh, we didn't see, was part of the um, Ever Beach cleanup, the park cleanup. Uh, we didn't see it was one of the participants. Okay, in that particular situation, because you're with the, the safety force, you know, the police force, uh, is there any reason why there was no officers there directing traffic, being that the park had a lot of people there during the cleanup of um, bringing in the barriers? Uh, was there any request done for that, for the safety of the community? We didn't uh, participate on the day when the barriers were brought in. Kurt, do you know anything about that? Yeah, yours was a yeah, that. The day that the barriers were brought in, um, we didn't participate on it that day. The day that we did participate was the day when the cleanup, when we did the actual cleanup, which was a Monday. Uh, I forget the date. I think so the day the barriers work that came in was not there. Were you guys aware of the barriers coming in? I was not aware of the barriers coming in. Was HPD aware of the barriers coming in? Not that I know of. I didn't know that was part of the park cleanup or beautification that wasn't part of um, our portion okay bringing in the barriers oh, I just want a clarification on that thank you okay sorry any other questions community well thank you thank you well my mayor's representatives Good morning board my name is Ross Tanimoto I'm the mayor's representative uh, a lot of agendas tonight. Uh, the first, the complainer issue is uh, the Howbush cleanup on Sunday. The community wanted, wants to know who organized this cleanup and why no notices or flyers were distributed. 
the cleanup at Oneava Beach Park was a joint effort of the Department of Parks and Recreation and the community. Uh, the Parks and Recreation cleared Keawe and brushed around the perimeter of the park. The community effort led by Kirk Favela involved placement of concrete barriers and clearing additional bush. The concrete barriers were authorized by the Parks and Rec due to vehicles damaging the post and chain barriers when driving on the playing fields and damaging the irrigation systems and field. There are openings between the concrete barriers where existing openings in the chain barriers were. Uh, there are cleanups scheduled several months, several times a month without any notices being distributed. Any questions on this issue? Anyone from the board? Sure. Um, last month I did request to bring a, no, a copy of the notice of the transfer from state to city. Yes. Um, do you happen to have it? Yes, that's the uh, next issue. Okay. <laughs> Further beyond, this is the how bush cleanup issue. And is it, as I said, um, is it stamped um, and dated on there? Oh, I, I didn't bring the actual Okay, transfer. that is, that, you know, this is, this is why we, as a community, you know, we run into a lot of problems because things are being done and it's not, to me, you know, you need to waver when it's, the, li the liability from the state to the city. Who's going to be responsible? That's why I requested that liability, the transfer. And you don't have it, just not time, you know. I mean, so this is, not, this is still an issue. Uh, the, the transfer of liability from the state to the city in and regards to the park cleanup? Regarding the barriers. Okay. So the, you believe the barriers are state property? The barriers from DOT was transferred to Hawaiian homelands, was placed on parcel 24. That particular parcel, I believe, that needed to get rid of the barriers on parcel 24. And as I stated last meeting, the barriers was placed on 30-something parks within, I believe, it's on the leeward side. And I need to know about the liability of transfer. Okay, my apologies. I didn't uh, I, You know, because I repeated this thing clearly last month, and I, uh, and I assumed that you would, be, you would bring it this month, and, you know, we can't prolong this thing, because what if, in the meantime, someone gets hurt? Who's going to be responsible? Mm -hmm. Again, my apologies. I don't know what we were addressing the Jersey barriers, but I'll look into that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any more questions? Mr. Chair. Chair. Okay, Mr. Uh, Chair, on this side. Uh, sir, was this an annual cleanup or bi-monthly or bi-yearly cleanup? Who solicited the city to engage in a cleanup in a community? Was this a, a political effort or, or just a volunteer or somebody had planned for this long time ago? What is it? Uh, I don't know if this is an annual cleanup. All I understand is the bar parks hold several cleanups per month. And they, they schedule it and they just act, activate the cleanup. So you got involved, the city got involved? Yes. And what part did the city play? Uh, the, the city provided materials, I believe, and also coordinated the, the cleanup. The city uh, continues to do the perimeter cleanup of the Calvi Bush. Follow up, Mr. Chair. Your Follow up, Mr. Chair. I think this is public information. Who cares? Mr. Okay, Chair. Quick, quick. Quick one, Glenn. Uh, are you aware of the, the barriers in there? Um, when you say, are, am I aware, what does you The mean? barriers, the concrete barriers in Hogbush, putting on the beach park. I, I went to the What park. is the city's position on that? Uh, it, from the report from the Parks and Recs, uh, they authorized the barriers to be placed within Hogbush. They, they have authorized? That they stay there, remain there permanently? Okay, um, Mr. Miller, he answered your question. Okay, move on with the next one you have on your list. Here is a chair. Oh, there's a, uh, there's a uh, question raised by you. Do you have, Tom? Uh, is it going to be a different question? This, this is, uh, from my understanding, my one minute per subject matter. Okay. I'm exercising that. Yeah, okay. From my understanding, the meeting prior of last month, I had made an inquiry as to if these barriers were permanent 
So I thank you. I think it's a very appropriate question because the response by the chair was that in, when I had exclaimed that it was a blight, an eyesore, that they would be beautified and alluded to them being painted or something of that nature by children. And I don't know where the children, who would be painting what, but <clears throat> A, are you aware of that, that they would be beautified in any such manner? And the point that I, reason I'm speaking is, is that I believe the chair is chair of parks committee and at each and every instance of something of this magnitude goes through a committee level where everyone here can weigh in. Nobody got to weigh in, and I want that in the minutes. Nobody in this community and board got to weigh in on this. It was skirted. Right, Second twelve. Right. Okay, item number two, Kapolei Parkway, Rent and Road City or State Overgrown Grass Needs Trimming. Uh, the Parkway, Kapolei Parkway Rent and Road was a project done by DDC and is scheduled to turn over to DFM in the, in the near future. Uh, once it is turned over, DFM will affect maintenance. I have no date on when they're going to do the turn, the transfer. Any questions? Yes, sir. The Pohakapuna Road. When is it going to be repaired and resurfaced or resurfaced? Okay. I don't have that. Don't let me okay. Um, for that information, um, I think we need to research on the minutes. Joyce Oliveira gave us information on the Pohakapuna situation uh, when she was the rep for the mayor. Um, was because of the pulling out of the um, contractor and right now at the time the city was looking into it um, and tried to get it repaired so there's no time limit and right now it's still on the, the investigation and looking at how they're going to take care of that road so that, okay. that, yeah, that was something that uh, back in the day Kyo Suyoka brought up because he lived in that area and uh, I'm pretty sure she answered the question on the Puakapuna uh, resurfacing but we never have a timeline on that Okay, item number three, uh, rubbish piled up outside of the Tsunami Center on Fort Weaver. Um, Fort Weaver Road is a state property, so therefore state has to address that issue. Move four, excuse me. Uh, speed limit sign request, um, no response from DTS at this time, so I imagine next month we'll be providing a response. Uh, road name changes from old Fort Weaver Road to Honolulu Road and Fort Weaver Road into Fort Weaver Highway. Um, again, no response from DTS at this time. We'll, we'll bring an update next next month. Uh, number six, when other agencies transfer properties to the city, who is liable and how is the liability transfer carried out? Okay. Uh, not necessarily for the Jersey barriers, but usually when there is a transfer, the city doesn't take liability until the actual property is in our possession. Okay. And the state, uh, with a I'm sorry. With the request that the state had transferred their liability, yeah, responsibility over. And no that's theory. basically what we want to see. And this is not because to, you know, to, um, to make a scene or anything, but this is just for a safety issue. So in case something do happen, um, you know, we can go ahead and, or whoever can go ahead and go through the proper channels and see the city about it. Okay. Not, not where, if something do happen and they say, oh, you know what, that's not the state fault. That's not the state property, it's the city. And the city gonna say, hey, you didn't let go of the liability. We seen too much of that. So with our community, we wanna make sure that everything is safe and everything is, is legit. So in case something do happen, the people know where to go. Okay. Okay? okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else from the community? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, right now, um, I'm going to take uh, Olomoa, Olomoa Elementary. I'll take them out of order. Um, we have an elementary school with a lot of uh, young children. That um, to, I, I, yeah, I talked to the, most of the board members if they have no objections. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you guys, Olomoa Elementary. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Um, yes. May I inconvenience the, the audience and, and the board? That uh, in, in regards to the barriers, I think we had. Uh, so, we're sorry, Mr. Moving on. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. I think I have the floor, Mr. Chair. I think it is. Yeah, but I'm not recognizing you. I'm recognizing Holomore Elementary at this time. So thank you very much, Holomore Elementary. Can we give them a hand?
Hi, we are students from Holomoa Elementary School, and we are here to share our solutions to Ever Beach to Ever Beach traffic. And here with us, we have our principal, Mr. Peng. Hi, I'm Jocelyn from the Waterways Group. Hi, I'm Taryn from the Waterways Group. Hi, I'm Megan from the Waterways Group. Hi, I'm Samantha from the Waterways Group. Hi, I'm Keaton from the Railways Group. Hi, I'm Sophia from the Roadways Group. Hi, I'm Nina from the Roadways Group. Hi, I'm Brooke from the Roadways Group. Hi, I'm Kylie from the Airways Group. Hi, I'm Angela. I'm in Airways, and we're going to show you a video. Costa, and I'm Miss and we're from Holomoa Elementary School. We are both sixth graders in Holomoa's enrichment program for grades three through six. We will be explaining what we do in enrichment. In enrichment, we enter the first day of the competition, also known as FLO. There are two parts to FLO: research presentation and label robotics. There is a different topic every year. The topic this year is called Smart Moves. This challenge requires us to work out transportation issues within our community. For the robotics portion, we build robots as Lego. We program our robots to complete missions related to transportation. The second part is our presentation. Based on the topic, we select a transportation issue in our Ever Beach community. The problem we tackled this year is that there is too much traffic in Ever Beach. Ever Beach's growing population is leading to too many cars on the road. We found that adding more lanes is only a temporary solution because our population keeps growing. By 2023, the Department of Transportation predicts there will be 77,800 cars in Ever Beach, which will be an increase of over 22,000 cars. Look, and we have creative solutions to this problem. That's here from our water racer. Hi, my name is Gabrielle Aguilar, and our awesome traffic solution is Aquabot. Aquabot is a, is a robotic ferry that floats in the ocean. To conserve energy, she has solar panels and is powered by the sun. She has propellers that help her steer through the water. There are three main levels on Aquabot. Level 1 is for vehicles to drive straight onto Aquabot when she lowers her computerized ramp. The passengers go through level 2 to wait comfortably as they reach their destination. The top level, level 3, contains the brain from which to operate her. We will launch her from Ocean Point Marina instead of Kaleloa Harbor. This way, people riding Aquabot will be going the opposite direction on Fort Weaver, therefore decreasing the amount of cars leaving Ever Beach. With Aquabot's new technology and great location, we feel the Aquabot will be the best traffic solution that Ever Beach ever had. Hello, it's me again. We've just we've got just the right solution to our Ever Beach traffic problem. It is a simple giant vacuum tube. We've named it the tube after the bus. The concept of this form of transportation will be as similar to the pneumatic tubes that propel cylindrical containers through a network of tubes using compressed air. The city and county Department of Transportation is already working on a rail system which will hopefully reduce traffic on the H1 freeway going to town bound. However, we will still need to fight the front river traffic to get to the rail station from Ava Beach. The tube will take people to the rail transit stations the passengers will be able to ride the rail into town. The tube will safely transport up to six people in a comfortable air conditioned comfortable air conditioned pods with cushions and will travel at speed of over seventy miles per hour. The location of the tube stations where passengers board the tube will be next to the bus stops with 
taking it walking distance for people in our community. It will run underground so it won't affect traffic on the roads. We believe the tube is a way of the future to every nation of travel. It will be safe, fast, convenient, and affordable. Thank you, Real Group. Here's a solution from our road base group. Hi, my name is Nina Reed, and I'm going to tell you the greatest, most awesome solution to the Evo Beach traffic problem. Our solution to the Evo Beach traffic is Rodibot. Rodibot is a portable robotic ramp that will extend over traffic accidents, allowing the vehicles con to continue to flow. Now when an accident occurs, the police will contact Rodibot to come to the scene of the accident. Officers will be able to leave the cars in place and investigate while Rodibot extends its ramp over the accident. Rodibot is able to extend its ramp up to 50 yards, 150 feet, and hold the weight of one lane traffic. Rodibot runs on solar power, which is cost efficient and eco friendly. Our solution will be a big help to the roadways, reducing increased traffic due to accidents. As our population is increasing in Eva Beach, there will be more cars on the road, therefore, more accidents. Rodibot is our eco friendly and efficient solution. Thank you, Roadways Group. Last but not least, the Airways Group. Hi, my name is Kylie Nakata. Our group's answer to the Eva Beach traffic problem is the supersonic flare. We believe it is a great solution to Eva Beach's daily traffic problem because it uses alternative energy, doesn't cost too much to ride, and there will be fewer cars on the road. The supersonic flare is a computerized aircraft with a spinning ring that surrounds its body. It uses solar energy for its power. It can hold 50 passengers and needs just one crew member to make sure that everything works well. Its maximum speed is 100 miles per hour and it hovers 80 feet in the air. The ring helps this aircraft rise or lower, similar to a helicopter. This other feature is important because it can take off and land without a runway. This means it needs very little space to operate. The supersonic flight does not land, but instead it hovers 5 feet above ground and has an automatic ramp which lowers to allow passengers on and off. This aircraft will stop at the parking rides on Oahu. Some of these areas include Eva Beach, Kapolei, Mililani, Hawaii Kai, and downtown Honolulu. Passengers will have the choice of staying in their seats or visiting the concession stand. The supersonic flare is our answer to Eva Beach's traffic jams. Thank you, Airways. Thank you to the neighborhood board for your time. Although these solutions seem unimaginable, someday they might be possible. We never know what the future holds for us. Just like our Captain Kirk from the 60s Star Trek series, Use the flip communicator. We use a similar device today that we can't live without. Cardo. So fun. Give them another hand. And when is this? They have a competition, you said? Competition is on November 21st. November 21st, Saturday. Where, where is it? Where is it going to be at? It's going to be at Kapolei Middle School. All right, and anyone can come to the event to support you guys. Hmm? Can, can anybody come and watch you guys? Yes. All right. So uh, Kapolei Middle School. Kapolei yep. Middle School. What time? 12, 12 noon, 12 noon, Saturday, 21st. Okay, go out there, support these kids, guys. Yes, All right, Chair. thank you. Mr. Chair, let me let me make a few comments on what the kids have done. You kids have done an excellent job for the last 25 years. That's what I've been talking about, and I think I think you under you understand what what we're we're impacted by in this area. Transportation development, overdevelopment impacts that go on every day in this area. And, and I, I hope as you grow up, you can understand that, that this is going to be your way of life.
How you address the issues in this area is going to be your way of life. Education is not, especially in, 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 in your field of, of education, I think this energizes us that we understand that there's people that are going to benefit from this. And you got to take up the, you got to take up the, the, the issues like we have taken up the issues and go for it. Because as we look, this is going to be a big impact, how we live our, our lives in this area, with jobs, with, with development. And don't forget, don't forget that this is the second city. And we must work towards a second city, develop a second city, all the infrastructure within a second city. And then mindset about going back to town, I think it's an old, old argument that we got to go back to town. No. As we live and work and play in this area, we got to make things that are going to continue our lifestyle and the quality, increase the quality of our lives. Thank you. Thank you. Tom? In the library across the hallway is a document. It was published in March of 2009, and it is the Roadway Connectivity Study. And it takes us all the way up to 2030 and beyond. I'd like to make a motion that because this study does not initiate or innovate, that my motion to this board is that the DVD or presentation is attached to a letter submitted by this chair to our city council member, chair of the city council, council member Todd Apo, and to our area elected state officials so that they can look into the cost analysis of your plan so that your idea can be taken to the next step whether or not it can be implemented and you have a right to that answer from your elected officials. So is there a second to that motion? Second. I second that motion. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? All right, we'll take that into consideration. Um, well, we invite the, the Todd Apo, our Chair uh, Councilman Apo, and uh, Representative Pine and Cabanella, and any elected officials to come and support the kids of Honolulu on Saturday, 12 o'clock, um, on the 21st at Kapolei Intermediate. Okay, thank you guys once again. Give them another hand, guys. Speaking about Chair uh, Councilman Tarapo, you're up. Good evening, everyone. Um, glad to be here, and obviously a tough act to follow with a lot of innovative ideas for some solutions. So I'll start with our transit project that we got going on. Um, just to give everyone an update, again, you might have read about it, but so everyone's aware of what's going on. Uh, the council recently approved the programmatic agreement, which is really the document that requires the city, uh, that talks about how the city has to deal with cultural sites that we may find along the transit line. And that was something that I believed was very important because obviously as we're doing this large scale solution for transportation uh, solutions, we need to continue to be aware of our cultural sites, our Iwi Kupuna, and any other historical sites that may be along the line. So this document, which is signed with the FTA and other parties, uh, will really mandate on the city how we deal with those sites should we run across them and requires the city to do certain studies before the construction even starts in order to identify those locations. Uh, with that, the next step really is going to be the uh, issuance of the final EIS. That needs to be accepted both by the federal government and the state government. Uh, and then we need to get certain approvals by both of those governments before we can begin construction. I think as you all read about and heard about in the mayor's address a couple weeks ago, we're probably looking sometime in January for actual construction to start. Although we have awarded the first construction contract, which again, I hope you are also aware, uh, had a large cost savings relative to initial expectations. And so we know there's concerns about lower revenues, but we also are seeing the lower costs in this construction that we're expected. Um, thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, and it's, it's in the newsletter as well, but we continue to discuss the bed and breakfast situation. I know there are some of those types of facilities here in Neva Beach. I've heard from some, many constituents in this area. 
you know, it's always sort of written as a big Kailua North Shore issue, but I know along, not only in Eva, but along the Leeward Coast around these issues as well. So the whole thing is we're trying to make sure that we have, one, a set of rules that make sense for these um, bed and breakfasts, and two, making sure that the department is going to actually enforce those rules. I think that's been a lot of the problem up till now, is that there hasn't been the enforcement that's necessary. Um, I'm going to try to keep this short because, one, I know you guys got a bunch of things, too. I hope everyone's aware there's a pretty big rainstorm out there, a lot of thunder and lightning out there, so hopefully everyone can take care as they leave here tonight. Lastly, I just want to touch, I was able to get updated on the DHHL projects, which are really happening right in between Kapolei and Eva and along the north-south road. Uh, one thing I got updated on recently was the uh, remediation that they're doing for the pesticide site that's somewhat right in the middle of, of their development. I think it's great that the department is taking on the, the responsibility of cleaning up that pesticide site because as, as the communities develop around this area, as was mentioned, we are the second city. We need to make sure that those areas actually get cleaned up and they don't just get left there and try to work around them. The Department of Hawaiian Homelands is, is undertaking the effort to do the studies, uh, figure out how to clean up the site, and, and then we talked about what to do with it next. I know there were ideas of a park, though I know that's always a bit of a hesitancy on a, on a pesticide contaminated site, no matter how much remediation you do. One thing I suggested to them, and it's, I think it's something we're going to continue to talk about, is to look at doing a sustainability project there. Perhaps it's not a big area, but photovoltaic, some smaller wind energy, to use that area as sort of a centerpiece of what you can do with a small area to help provide sustainable energy for the community around it. And so um, I know that's going to come up before this community and, and the community of Kapolei to talk about. Anyway, I will leave it at that and open it to questions. Thank you, Chair. All right, any questions from the board? I have about, this is Chair, I have about two or three questions there. Yeah, one question, Mr. Miller. Apparently there's a disconnect between um, the people that are in favor of the rail, like politicians and, and developers and, and people of interest that donate a lot of money to, to this project. But I think there's really a disconnect between the ordinary people, the grassroots people, and, and, and the, the people who are definitely in favor of rail. I think there's a, there's a disconnect. How do you feel about that, Councilman? Uh, I know there's a difference of opinion. I wouldn't call it a disconnect. I, I personally have sat through hours upon hours of hearing both sides of the story. I know it's been debated in nearly every neighborhood board. I think we all agree we're never going to have absolute consensus on this, uh, but hopefully your elected leaders, including myself, are taking that input and making decisions. And it's one of the reasons we put it on the ballot for the vote by the public last year. I'll follow up, Mr. Chair. The only reason why I ask is because traf uh, uh, the rail would never decrease traffic, probably by 20% until the thing is fully built out. But on the other hand, I think you as a council person that represent from Eva Beach all the way to, to uh, Macaw, I think the people that drive the freeway, that come out of this area, go to town, but there's nothing to sustain them in this area. They're going to keep jobs and, and keeping them from drive, driving into town. So I think really, I, I, and, and again, I gotta, I gotta emphasize that rail is not gonna decrease no. traffic Mr. that Mr. much. By two, two, What's the 2030, question? it only needed decreases by 20, 22%. So, so there's, there's really no, the not a basis, there's, there's not a basis for rail. But we haven't come, we haven't heard in this community a presentation on rail. What's the question? The question is, what is, what are you doing, what are you doing to, to keep people, especially the, the areas that we, you represent from driving the freeway every day? And rail is not the answer. Well, and quick response. We have had the presentation. I, I came to this board and made a PowerPoint presentation probably three or four years ago now. Not only about the rail system itself, but the benefits exactly that you're talking about. It can't be just about the rail system. It needs to also be about the transit-oriented development that happens around the rail, which provides the jobs for people to be able to stay in the community that they live in. Um, but it also is exactly what you're talking about, finding those developments, and that's what's happening in the downtown city of Kapolei. That's why I've worked so hard to support the UH West Oahu campus, because that allows not only the jobs, but for the students no longer having to, tra to travel into Manoa. And we all know that's a major part of the traffic. And so you're right, it, it's not just about rail, there's a lot of other pieces that has been talked about. So I think it's a bit unfair to say that that has not been discussed at all, because it has. Thanks. All right, thank you. Thanks for this.
Hi, Todd. Good evening. What happened on the vote in the city council regarding the um, increase on property taxes? Uh, well, let, let me rephrase this. There's no increase in property taxes yet. Okay, what, what the council decided on... The change of your, you know, your vote and everything? What, what happened was we, the council created, at the request of the mayor, a homeowner's classification. So everyone, has, all you homeowners right now, when you, you apply for your homeowner classification, you get an $80,000 exemption. What the mayor wanted to do was also create a classification so that those that are, are homeowners not only get the exemption, but will also potentially have a different rate relative to other residential, which includes renters, uh, vacation homeowners, and, and that type of group. As you all know, I was not in support of that. And th but this is um, what they call enabling legislation. This does not actually implement that process. This just allows that tool to exist, and we can discuss as we get into budget whether or not that should exist. Like I said, I was not in favor of it. The mayor understood that he had five votes that didn't include me. When that day came, he found out he lost a vote. And so came and asked me if I would vote to support it so that the discussion could continue into the budget cycle next year of whether or not to actually use that tool. I said, right now, as I told him, as I said that evening, I'm not in support of using that tool. Okay? But I also say, I don't know what our budget situation is going to be next year. It's going to be a tough one. We all see what the state's facing. and The counties are always going to be a year behind. I hope we don't have to use it because I think there's some dangers with it. But not being able to stand there and say, I know we don't need it because the mayor believed he needed it that strongly. I was willing to, to give him the option of having that tool so we could have the discussion down the road. All right, Tom, go ahead. Um, I heard a statement made regarding uh, board member Oamilda that uh, in response he had multiple questions. He was just told that he could not provide multiple questions to you. I don't find anything on page one here. Uh, if the neighbor commission office representative is still here, um, everyone's afforded one minute. And in that one minute, I believe you can speak more than one question. In fact, you don't even have to ask a question. You can comment. And my comment is, have you been and seen the barriers down at O'Neill Beach Park? Have you seen them yourself? Uh, and also, what's your position on the State Land Use Commission if indeed they do reject and do not approve of the reclassification for Ho'opili from ag to urban, and therefore the transit-oriented development with the rail solution becomes moot. What will you do about it? Two diverse questions. One, I have not been down to see the barriers, and I've been out of town for about the last week and a half. I just got back uh, Sunday night, so I know it's on my list, and my staff uh, apprised me of what was going on, so I will, I'll, we'll find the time to get down there. I also take into account the uh, statements that Ross brought from the administration, and we'll get that worked out and, and find a solution. I encourage as I have always with this board and other boards, these kinds of issues, it is helpful for me and I think to help move the administration that the board take a formal position and provide it to us in writing. I, I think that's always helpful in these issues that not really clear which way to go. On uh, Ho Pili, if in the end it is ultimately not approved, then I think we, we are gonna need to reassess rail and, and what that means from the ridership standpoint um, and we're also going to need to reassess, I think, at the state level, the UH West Oahu campus. Because if you're not going to have the type of community that was planned around that area, does it, how much sense does it make to continue to develop West Oahu campus to the magnitude that they currently have proposed? All of that, not only rail, but the UH West Oahu campus itself is based on some assumptions about the long-term population around that area. Um, we all, I think we all understand. What happened was a procedural matter at the Land Use Commission. They're going to continue to have those issues, and until there is an actual final decision, um, it, it, you know, we're not going to be able to say exactly what's going to happen. But you know, I think we all understand the point. If in the end it doesn't go through, we are going to have to reassess. Development needs to be, you know, reallocated island-wide. Oh, uh, Mr. Chair. had asked his first question, Mr. Berg. That's the reason why he couldn't ask two more after that. He had to wait to everyone go through the questions and then he can follow up with his final question. So right now, Mr. Mr. Chair, a question. Mr. Chair, Port of Order, you asked me to ask one question, one question alone. Right, but you have one minute time for one question. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Tom. Tom, first of all, I want to, Todd, I'm sorry. 
Tina as well. Todd. Okay. I want to go ahead and um, um, thank your office for going for researching about what we call amateur radio. One of our um, residents was put on, put on the side because he was using his amateur radio. I just wanted to make known that if you are a licensed, if you are licensed to use an amateur radio, it is exempt from the law as a cell phone. So you are okay, isn't that right? Yeah. To let, me use just, but let me just so there's no confusion. Those two-way, you know, what was Nextel and now various companies have the two-way cell phones. Those are still cell phones. You actually have to have those amateur radio and, license. and be licensed. Okay, so don't think that because of that description you can use your two-way cell phone. The police are still enforcing those as actual cell phones. Yeah, so, so just to let the public know that if you do have a license you, and you are in your car, you need to carry your license at all times, which is, isn't that right, Todd? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, anyone from the community? Okay, go ahead. Um, Scott, then followed by the two ladies in the back. Those raising your hand. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Scott Delford. I'm speaking on the topic of transit. Um, Council Member Apo, when UH West Oahu was initially planned, was Ho'opili even a project on the horizon? I would question your logic in saying that the success of UH, Wa UH West Oahu is dependent upon Ho'opili. Um, maybe you can clarify whether or not they were both planned simultaneously. Secondly, with respect to the funding of transit, what is the status of the bond mechanism that we are needing to allow the city and county to use to fund transit? And last, what is your expectation for handling the looming city and county deficit next year? And do you expect an increase in property taxes? Um, I'll try to answer all these quickly. I hope what I said is the magnitude of the UH West Oahu campus as it is planned now is based on the assumptions, including Ho Pili. Obviously, when the original campus was planned and talked about being out here, and again, it depends how far back you go, Ho Pili, the development of that area has been on the other DP for a long time. I think as you know, as a lot of us know. The idea of a UH West Oahu campus what came before that. So it's not a matter of whether they should do anything at all. It's a matter of what magnitude they should do the West Oahu campus at based on that population feature. The bond issuance for rail, uh, the, what I had understood from the department most recently is their expectation is we would not do the bond issuance until after the full funding grant agreement is completed with the federal government so that we know there's federal funds going to be coming before we do the bond issuance. Um, last one was, sorry, remind me. Looming budget deficit. Budget deficit. Will property to forget. Sorry. Um, yeah, I, I think, as I think we're seeing at the state level, everyone's going to have to pitch in. I, I'm definitely not going to stand here and say that real property tax rates are not going to go up. Because I think we all know between June of last year and June of this year, everyone's, basically everyone's, um, gener very general statement, everyone's valuations have gone down. And so I don't believe that we're going to be able to keep rates the same. And that's one of the dangers of the homeowner's classification, if we actually implement it, is that those pressures get shifted to different places. So. I, I think the first focus continues to have to be cutting government spending, finding out, deciding what are our true core services of the city, funding those, knowing what we need beyond that, and not trying to focus on how much revenue do we have, let's figure out how to spend it. Let's figure out what we need to spend first. So I guess I would ask, hopefully in the future, now, I know I asked four years ago if it would be a mistake for the city and county to build a budget based on overly inflated property values. Now we are reaping that, uh, the consequences of that decision. In the future, do you think that we might make decisions not to build budget forecasts around overly inflated property values and maybe in fact consider the incremental tax basis on an annual 10, 15 percent? And I hear what you're saying, but I guess the point I would make is we have lowered, uh, especially the residential real property tax rates year after year because of those overinflated valuations. So I think we have taken that into effect. Whether we've carved enough and been as core as, as we need to be, I don't know. But as I've asked this board and other communities as well, if you are seeing the things out there in city services that you think we don't need to do, let us know. Right? I mean, because nobody wants to say we're going to cut your park service. No one wants to say we're not going to let you get, go get your driver's license, you know, three days a week instead of five days a week. 
That's part of the discussion that neighborhood boards, as advisory to the city, need to be involved in is where can we cut? And that's, you know, this, as I've said before, this is the time during the off budget season, this is the time to have those discussions and let us know so we can start factoring them in when we get the budget starting in March. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Okay, Glenn. Um, this is a follow up on a, a whole appeal. A couple months ago, I asked you the question if what would the, the, um, the, the route look like for the rail if it uh, was denied by the DLU, uh, Department of Land Use Commission, um, and you said that you guys haven't taken it into consideration. But now, uh, uh, you know, they have taken a stand and, and it's been denied uh, the request to rezone that whole Pili uh, parcel. And um, I, I, think, I think you've got to take a real deep consideration on this, uh, Councilman, that, uh, you know, the people is not, is not really fond of, of losing up prime agricultural land. So I, I think you've you got to, you know, bite the bullet somehow and take a look of an alternate route if you guys wish to have rail for this area. And uh, uh, whole Pili is gonna stay in ag, whether you like it or not, and, and this is the favor of the community. And the question? The then? question is, you still haven't, you still haven't uh, given me an answer as to looking for an alternate route for, for the potential building of the rail. And again, quick response, because I know I've said this before to you, exactly your question is, I'm not convinced that we would necessarily change the route, even if whole Pili didn't exist. And the main reason is, is that the connection of university campuses is one of the key ridership elements for, for rail systems. And you look at that nationwide, I mean, San Diego, um, Salt Lake City, all make sure that they connect the university campuses. It's something, again, that's been talked about. How do we connect not only UH West Oahu campus, but the community colleges, Leeway Community College, Honolulu Community College, <laughs> all the way into UH Manoa. And that's, that's important now. So I'm not saying that it won't change, but I think that factor needs, will be factored in whether or not Ho'opili exists. Just to address, because I've said this before, I want to put it out as well. In regards to ag land, in regards to prime ag land, there is an abundance of excess prime ag land throughout the central core and north shore. And in talking with landowners that own those lands, they can't even get lessees to farm that. I understand we'd all like to be farming all our land and sustainable, but we also need to balance what our future is. And so again, it's not something I know you and I are going to agree on, and it's something that's but, a great but, discussion but amongst you, many people, but that's where that's the decision to chair the decision is going to be with the Commission. Thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. There's other private lands. The lady in the back, there's not. Come forward, please. The two ladies right there, raising your hand, you, side, and the other lady. Come to the mic. The other lady was raising her hand too. I'll come up, stand in line. Thank you, please. Aloha, board. Thank you, Chair. Welcome. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Zaya Mosa. Um, you know, I'm just here because I'm a little disappointed with what's going on. It's pretty sad that we have amazing people, you know, from the state and from the city, and they're here bringing this information for us. Basically, what you're doing here as a board, you sit there as an advisory, and what you do is you sit and you listen. You hear out the community's voice. These are the people that come and they have any concern in regard to what's happening in the community, what's happening around where they live. They bring it to you, and what you do is you connect us. You connect the community to the agency or to the proper, you know, channel where they need to go to but you're sitting here attacking them. It's really sad, it's really sad. You know, you guys are amazing leaders, however, you know, may, there's too many leaders on this board. There's no honor here, we have one chair, and yet you guys are battling. There's a power of struggle that's going on in this meeting. You guys need to stop it. I think enough is enough. <laughs> We're sick and tired of hearing this. If I am offending anybody, I do apologize. But you know, there's a power struggle, and it starts with the board. The board, you guys have to work together for many, many years. We've sat, and I even sat on the board myself. Same thing, same power struggle. You guys are not allowing the chair to do his part. You guys are not allowing the representatives to come and do their part. You know, to a point I'm sitting there, but you see these amazing men and women coming here to give you this information and give us this information. It's like they have this fear of standing in the front of you. Why do they have fear? Fear should not be something that should be in them. 
They're here, they're working hard. While you guys are here fighting and arguing, guess what? The job is still being done outside. Roads are being built, sidewalk is going up. It's beautiful. It's amazing what's happening in the community. But when you're still having bickering over here, I don't know what's going on. So you're bickering here while they are still doing the work. The work is being done. It is being completed. Please, stop it with the arguing. Stop it with pointing finger. But let's move the agenda along. There's so many things that need to be covered. They're amazing people. They have amazing people here sitting in this audience. Great ideas that they want to present to you. But you're not hearing it because you're too busy, you, there's too much of you, too much negativity going on. When there's too much negativity, you have an agenda of your own. Not aside from what we have here. Please let's stick to the agenda. Let it flow. Hear everybody else. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Hi, my name is Deborah. She pretty much summed up what I wanted to say. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I speak for many of us here. We have other things to do tonight, and can we just get to the matters at, at large? The business of the community. And one chief. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Chair. Let me, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay, hold on, hold on. One quick one there, Scott. Thank you. Um, I'm now speaking on the topic of what we expect from the board. As a point of order, I will A, uh, ask this chair to please remind the audience we are to address comments to the chair consistent with Robert's rules. Secondly, if we are to expect board members and or select audience members to be held to a one minute time standard, uh, as much as I love all community input and wish we had a limitless time standard, I would appreciate equal enforcement. We just went well over two minutes, um, maybe perhaps the shared a particular bias. So I would only say that on this topic, I personally appreciate and respect the fact that half of Hawaii is not registered to vote. Of the registered voters, half show up to vote. That means 75% of you, chances are, given up and stopped caring. And the voice of some people on this board is, in fact, that frustrated, disgruntled voice that we wish would be represented and we wish we'd show up at the polls. And I appreciate very much the opportunity this chair provides members who are elected by the community to speak on behalf of the community with all perspectives, positive, negative, proactive, reactive, to being equally valid. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, go ahead, uh, Mr. Mildo. Mr. Chair, the purpose of this board... Yeah. Oh, sorry, I thought you had a question for me. No, 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 uh, the comment, the comment and a okay, question. Okay, well, we still have Todd Paul on here. Um, uh, Mr. Uh, Steve, you had something for Mr. Apo? Okay, one more quick one, please. Todd, this was a follow-up from last month's meeting. I understand your girls had made a file to the city um, on a complaint um, about how Bush. Did you receive any um, follow-ups from there? Because not I didn't get anything in my email not, since Not then. that I know of, and if you haven't gotten it back, I assume we haven't gotten it, but we'll follow up on it. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Uh, Councilman. Well, I have an invitation here for you, and I also have an invitation for you in, um, to come and see if you guys can do the judging for our Christmas parade on um, December 12th. Thank you for it. Okay. Can we have uh, bug water? Kelly? Sorry, I took you out of order. Uh, good evening, Chair Favela, board members, and Eva Johanna. My name is Keone Matos, and I'll be giving the Board of Water Supplies report for the month of November. So firstly, there are um, no main breaks in the month of October. So uh, we want to take this time to share our general water announcement, and we'll be talking about um, fire hydrants, because they play a very important part uh, in, our, in the Board of Water Supplies' efforts to provide a safe and dependable water service. So hydrants are not only for fire protection, but we also use them to provide water for contractors who are working on construction projects, to use them for street sanitation and also other uses. Um, AWS is installed and is responsible for the maintenance of more than 20,000 fire hydrants on the island of Oahu. And standard maintenance includes flushing, lubricating, um, valve inspection, painting, and assigning hydrant numbers. So the BWS also makes certain that the water that's coming out of the hydrant is at a sufficient water pressure to fight fires. 
Uh, so these hydrants are maintained every 18 months and we make sure we take good care of them. And also only the BWS and the fire department employees are allowed to take water from a fire hydrant unless authorized by the BWS. Uh, if you need more information, it's on our website, uh, www.boardofwatersupply.com. And to report a malfunctioning hydrant, uh, you can call 748-5000. And lastly, we wanted to talk about our 2009-2010 Xeriscape Garden workshop schedule. Uh, we're proud to announce that it's now on our website. Uh, we have some really fun uh, educational workshops that feature Xeriscape, which is unthirsty plants and gardening techniques that help residents to save water outdoors. So again, you can visit our website to check out, um, check them out or to register for them. Uh, for instance, this Saturday we have a rain barrel <coughs> catchment workshop. Unfortunately, that one is filled, but it will be offered again in the future. We also have next week, Saturday, November 21st, is the unthirsty miracle tree, the Kalamungai. And lastly, uh, Xeriscape holiday wreath, which is on November 28th and December 25th. And the last thing is we have, we're very happy to have, um, show our uh, 2010 water conservation calendar. Unfortunately, I only have a few copies, but I'll bring some more again next, um, at the next meeting, or you can call the Board of Water Supply at 748-5000 to get your own copy. Uh, you have any questions? All right, Amy, go ahead. Chair, please. Thank you, Keone. Can I just ask you if you can just email me um, there was a water break on Eva Beach Road on September 21st. Can you just let me know how old that the pipe was, please? Thank sure. you. Yes, I can. Okay, Keone, there was also a water break on Eva, um, Papipi Road. And I believe that that particular area was repaired numerous of times. Is there a way that they could go ahead and make it I mean, just repair it where it doesn't happen again because it really inconveniences us okay, in that area that. by turning off our water. Okay, Thank, you. Thank you. All right, anyone from the community? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, okay, um, we can do that. We can do, we can go after this, uh, request to remove uh, the chair. I'm going to move up, um, committee. If, if there's no objection, then I'll move up the December board recess vote for the uh, recess in December and uh, announcements. And the, the reason for the recess is because of the funding for the filming. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that we recess in December Everybody's got a pretty full plate, usually in December with Christmas and so on. And a lot of people take off then for vacations or family stuff to get together. And we're, we're, in, we're very strongly encouraged to uh, have less meetings anyway, anywhere from one to three this year. And December would be the best time. Okay, any second? Roll call, uh, We have a motion by Steve, seconded by Mitchell, for uh, requesting the bar recess in December. So we're going to do a roll call vote. Sajarakaki. What's the motion, please, Clerk? Board recess in December. And an I vote is to recess. Yes, because there will be enough funding to... Well, is, is there a discussion the first before we vote? I didn't have an opportunity. Any discussion? Yeah, my, my discussion is, is, you know, a lot of ports don't pay for filming. To opt out, because 
There's not funding for film. Have the meeting, do the people's business. We're backlogged. We're behind. And so we can still conduct the meeting. Some boards put meeting minutes in newspapers. They ask their local publications if they can do it. Kapolei does it. I believe why Powell's done it for some time. So we can opt out for other options, but still have the meeting. So I really hope everybody here on this board wants to be here in December and advance our agenda. Okay, anyone call for a question? No. Oh, yeah, something good. Yeah, I'd like to answer that. It's a situation where we're supposed to have three, it's been by the commission, Noah, has the commission suggested that we have three, va three vacations? You may take three recesses. Yeah, it, it, see the situation is that we have elected officials that would like to have off, community probably would like to have off, and I don't see any reason why we shouldn't have off for Christmas if they're encouraging us to have anywhere from one to three months off anyway. Mr. Mr. Chair, let me give you my input. We can keep, we can keep as a community service. These are what the state yeah. Okay. Okay. We join your motion or? But we will follow up the board. If there's a meeting, we will be there. All right. Okay. Call for a question. Wait, wait. Let me, let me give you my input. Everybody else is giving. Okay, go ahead. Let, 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 me, let me say this. I think we're about the people's business. I mean, who, who's the loser in, if we take a day off? It's not us. It's you guys. Because yet we don't we don't get to see or what the what the problems are in the community. I mean, we, you guys are losers, not us. And I, and I suggest that we, we continue to have a meeting in December. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, I'd like a, a show of hands who wouldn't mind if we took off in uh, December. Uh, the community is here. Uh, they can vote. They can show the people on this board whether or not they'd like to take off uh, December and give people, give not only the community but the board members and especially the elected officials, and they can weigh in too. So anybody who wouldn't mind us taking off in December, would you raise your hands? I think we should take a board vote. How we supposed okay, to be? This is a board issue. There shouldn't be a community issue because we're the one that has to. Well, we never said that. Not um, the community. Let's call for the vote. So, now let's uh, call for yeah, the vote here. Hold on, wait, hold on. Steve never said that the vote count. It was mentioned by a board member that the community is losers if they want to take off. So that was a clarification that Steve made. That doesn't mean that they count. So I'll get all you guys excited. We're going to call for the question. We're going to vote. Mr. Chair, Thank I'd like you. to show of hands for the number of people who just raised their hands saying that we had too much right. work in this community. Call, call for the question. Can I vote for vote, please? Thank you. Do, does the audience get a, a comment on the issue of whether or not the board takes? Uh, they call for a question. Um, Mr. Roger requested a call for a question. So now it's a roll call vote. Sorry. I, I believe I was standing here at the same time. I know, but he, he, he didn't just ask. He, he said it very loudly, so. Point of order. It's up to the board if they want you to hang the arm, Mr. Belford. It's not up to me. Call the question. Under what rule is a board member allowed to speak while an audience member is waiting for his turn? This is a this is a public generated forum. I ask again, under what rule is a board member allowed to speak while an audience member is at the microphone respectfully waiting his or her turn? As a point of order, I wish clarification on this matter. Otherwise, Chair, I think yeah. um, somebody asked to call for the vote. Can we call for the vote, please? Do we want a recess for December or not? Perhaps a board member would ask the same question then. If Sandra Hachi. So, so point of order, under what rules is a board member allowed to speak but not an audience member? <laughs> And this is a question directed at the board, not at the audience, I believe. 
Mr. Bird? Yeah. Uh, Kurt? Kurt? We're voting if you would like to recess in December or not. Answer is do not recess. Okay, no. no. Mary Chanel Benjamin? No recess. Kurt Favela? Yes. Oh. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Steenar? Yes. Celeste LaQuesta? No recess. Roger LaQuesta? No recess. Kobe Lynn? Yes. Marciana Nagata? Amino. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Richard Tanani? No and Mr. Glenn Omilda? No recess. Motion passes 8 to 3. So the board will not recess in December. We will do it pro bono if it's a budget. So we have enough board members over here that voted yes, so they probably could chip in a few bucks. All right, moving on. Okay, can we have uh, announcements? Huh? Okay, yeah. Yeah, I moved up the I moved up the December board recess and we voted on that and I'm gonna move up some announcements and then we're gonna go back into the regular agenda. So we can get some of the announcements out. Go ahead, Celeste. Okay, Celeste. I have um I have some questions and I know that there are some people here from the NCO that I need to clarify things on why the removal of the chair was changed for tonight's request because I had submitted a request October 18 and there was a whole bunch of requests to be placed on the agenda. It was, uh, it was accepted, it is on the agenda except this one particular item. Um, could someone come here and explain because I'm hearing too many things that I, it's supposed to be handwritten, it's supposed to be walked into NCL physically, or it's supposed to have been directly to our chair, our co-chair, so I need to clarify something because I feel that I had done something correct. So can somebody come up front and clarify? Oh, okay. <laughs> I never see it. Okay. Uh, I, I want to understand your question again because um, I see that it is on the agenda, so I don't know what the issue it's is. It's on the agenda requesting to have it moved to the next meeting, which we're supposed to have it on the agenda for tonight's meeting. What you see on the agenda, what you never seen the revised, there was two agendas sent out. Mm -hmm. One where they had accepted it to be on the agenda, the very next day they changed it and had it where they're going to remove it on to the next meeting. Okay, um, I believe uh, Ryan Vick had talked to Kurt about it. Right. Now, what I, what my question to that is I did email on the 18th of October mm -hmm. all my requests to be placed on the agenda. Every request was placed on the, on the agenda except one. And because of that one, it came back saying that I did not place a request directly to the chair. Now, mind you, Nola knows I do not have the chair's email, nor I had never had his email address. Um, so I would, see, I would email it to Nola, CC to Kurt and Mitch on my request. Apparently that was done because it was placed on the agenda. On November, and this was done on the 18th, on November 6th, I had also emailed to Nola to, to let her know that I will be picking up the key because it's very important that we have this meeting tonight. That very same day, I got an email back from Kirk saying, yeah. no need. Understand. Now, we went now, through this to Right, the right. Article. Now, so my question is, if you can accept even one thing that I had submitted, why can't you accept everything that is on that paper? 
well, like I said to you earlier today, yeah. it, it, it is the chair's prerogative. Um, my understanding, though, are the things that you had listed are for follow-ups anyway. So they would have been on the agenda anyway. Not necessarily, because I did a lot of follow-ups and it was never on the agenda. That is why I were submitted that on the agenda. Were they not follow-ups? There were follow-ups. That's why I've been following up every month. Okay. And so it was that, that never was placed on the agenda. That is my understanding. So, because there were follow-ups. Now, I'm, I'm not sure who was here that night of the meeting. Tom, I, Nola spoke to me and she said, do you want to put it on the next month agenda? for discussion of the removal of the chair, I stated yes. But because I couldn't hear what she's telling me over the video, as you know, over the video. Well, uh, what she told me. So I said, yes, I want to motion that. At that time, Tom motioned, uh, seconded. Mm -hmm. Now, NCO, uh, uh, you know, NCO claiming that they didn't, that it was not done. It was done. It was motion and second to have it on this particular agenda. So to be on the safe side, I had emailed Nola to make sure it will be on the agenda, and I emailed her way before 10 days of the deadline to have it on the agenda. So, and I am so surprised that I did not receive any email saying, hey Celeste, I'm sorry, it's not gonna go on the agenda, or whatever, it's because, <coughs> You didn't directly email it to the chair. I got all the emails from Brian. Now, my question is, if we wanted to go ahead and proceed this, this thing, I want to see if I could go ahead and deny the request and go ahead with this particular assignment. It's up to the board. I'm sorry? It's up to the board. If you can get the board to go ahead and take action on so it. So is it a two-thirds? Two-thirds vote. Okay, but because it was on the request now, it was filed to be placed on the agenda. So shouldn't that denial should become a six vote, a majority half plus one. Can we take sure. that two thirds vote? It would be a two thirds vote. Let's take it. I mean, you know, it's it's the board's pro it's the chair's prerogative whether it goes on the agenda or not. Okay, that was it, you know, it's it's not the commission's um, prerogative, it's the chair's. If the, so chair is the chair to put it on for okay. whatever reason. Okay, in this particular situation, this is just a question because I need a clarification, especially on, on air, okay, because we did have the conversation today. So we need to vote to make sure it goes on next month's agenda on this, correct? No, my understanding is you wanted to take action on it tonight? No, I want it, if I wanted to take action, because I wanted clarity and I wanted to make sure it's on video, okay? So, because I did, I, I, I don't think that it's, it's fair that only certain things was accepted and then this is denied. Board Chair, can we move on this saying, but and do Kobe, some type of action? Kobe, excuse me, Kobe, excuse me, go ahead. Take I a vote or some saying. type of action. It is, it is um, you submitted your request. Um, for whatever reason, it didn't reach the chair or he did not respond to it. We have no control over that. But Nola, Nola, no, no, I, need to know, I need to clarify by Nola, read my request saying CC to Mitch and Kurt, did you go ahead and do, did you do that? Did you do that? Okay, so they so are as, as 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 long questions. Hold on, hold on. Okay, the clarification that, um, that's the reason why I asked Brian to be here and um, he's not here. Um, um, the clarification that he gave that because board member board, uh, Tom Berg had wrote his one in within the so-called 10 days, and the one that we're talking about for yours um, was not voted on the last board meeting, so there was no vote. Now, I wasn't here, so this is what coming from Brian. So he uh, um, supposedly observed the video, and that's what he was supposed to have reported tonight, but he didn't show up, that what he had observed there was no vote taken on your second um, from whoever seconded, I don't know. And that's why it wasn't put on the agenda because when Nola talked to me previously, it was. And then I found out later that it was not voted. If you look at the minutes, it was corrected even in the voting. They found out it wasn't voting and that's the reason why they had removed it. Had nothing to do with my prerogative or my removal of that request. 
Okay, so that's, 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 that's fine enough. We can go ahead and have it on next month's agenda. Can we move fine. forward? Yeah, it is my memory that that, w that no vote was taken because of all the confusion, uh, confusion and problems that, that subsequently uh, came up. And I also, after calling uh, the commission, I also was told something to that effect, that, that the vote hadn't been taken. It had been, motion had been made, it had been seconded, and then there was a huge brouhaha. Thank you. Can we move forward and vote? Mr. Chair, can the, can the Commission Office cite the specific statute that says that, are we dealing right now with hearsay, or is there a specific statute that says that the Chair can always override the agenda? It's my understanding as a foundation of Robert's rules that the Board can always have any item put on the agenda. So if we're dealing with this is what I believe and this is my understanding, then I think that, that, that I would ask for a specific statement either from the Neighborhood Commission Office or from Robert's Rules of Orders saying that the chair ultimately, especially in issues that have to deal with the chair and his or her legitimacy, can rule solely and independently on an agenda. If, if, this is a, if this is permissible and you can cite it, then so be it. I think we should really question this process. But otherwise, I think we're dealing with opinion and interpretation, and as a point of order, I consider all of this to be a complete violation of all sunshine laws. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. Um, just, just. Okay, Kurt, right now I want to go ahead and make a motion to place this on the agenda for next month. Okay, you know what? I changed my motion. I want to go ahead and place it on the agenda tonight. Anyone second that? Can I speak? Oh, sure. Okay, go ahead. Back to what me and a lot of other people here are thinking. Miss Luke La Cuesta. Um, um, and Mr. Glenn, can we please stop the interruptions? It's unnecessary, and I'm sure a lot of people back here feel the same way. It's, it's useless. We're not getting anything accomplished. Can we move on to the matters at hand? What happened? Okay. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm going to put my two cents in like everybody else is. This is ridiculous. Okay? Ridiculous. Un unacceptable. You guys have spent more time bickering among yourselves, okay, than taking care of community affairs, okay? And we have the same people who want to have themselves heard. We are jury, okay, now, now, the thing of it is, the vote about recessing December, okay, you guys would do us a great big favor if you went on a recess, because you know what, you're not getting anything done anyway. <laughs> you guys gotta start, okay, being a neighborhood board instead of being a individual, uh, whatever it is that you guys want to call yourselves, I want to be heard, individuals. Thank you. I just like to respond to my participation on this board as a volunteer. Um, I witnessed at a May meeting a removal process of Mr. Belfort, who's sitting in this audience, and it was stated on camera, for all of you that are applauding, that Chair Favela said he received a letter from Ambo that Mr. Belfort. Wait a minute, what does this have did, to do with Mr. Belfort? Yeah, thank you. I'm being interrupted, Meg. Meg, I, I haven't had a full minute. Out of order. I haven't had a full minute. Out of order. I'm not out of order. Out of order. Recess. NCO representative, you just witnessed another Sunshine Law violation. Thank you. Okay? Yeah. I got... Yeah. Other people were afforded one minute to speak. I was not. Again, 
I went to Sunshine Law training two weeks ago, and Mr. Mick said just that. Go for the question. Okay, we'll call the Excuse, um, you know what? We're running out of time right now. So um, the motion. We, we must go on the on the agenda. Nola, I want to go ahead and uh, move my uh, move it to next month's agenda. And anyone will second that? I would draw the the thing, and I will want to go ahead and move it on to the next agenda because we're running out of time. People need to go home. Roger. Thank you. Agreed. So I need to comment on that that motion just made. I need to comment. She withdrew the motion. I'm going to just do one thing, simple chair, one thing. I'm not going to speak more than three seconds. Put the YouTube down of the June 8th meeting where this chair and how he treated member Belford. That's all I'm asking. I'm asking you all that the minutes put the YouTube address on. Okay, we're done. And you can make your own decision. Put the YouTube address in the minutes. Would, could you, could you we are now residents and community concerns, please. The address of the YouTube in the minutes. Okay, can the Anybody has any residents and yes. community concerns? Yes. Community, community concerns. concerns. I have a community concern, Chair Favella. Okay. I have a community concern. We just moved to a new topic. Are you going to not let me speak again? Okay. Well, then what you should do is go up there and, and we'll have to complain more. Here we go. My community concern is, is merely just asking for all of you to listen, and if you would like to be treated, I, I, again. How about listening to one of you? Again, again. I'd like my minute restored, please. I won't interrupt you. I won't interrupt you. I've been, exercise, I've been exercising NCO representative my allotted time per Sunshine Law, and I've done it with due diligence to not offend anyone here. I'd just like to ask, under community concerns, Secretary Nola, would you please put the YouTube address, which I will provide for you after this meeting, and put it, my request is that that YouTube address be put in tonight's meeting minutes, so that everyone here in this audience can see that the complaint of the Office of Information Practices, the Office of Information Practices, not Tom Berg, has asked the chair to respond to some allegations that have been in violation of Sunshine Law. Not me, not anyone on the board. All right, the you got thank you, thank you, Mr. Bird, you got your minute. All right, okay, next teacher name. Any community concern? Hi, my name is Davina Ogarico. My community concern is everyone should be a resident of Ever Beach to be on the board. Is that correct? Okay, they are legal city residents. And from my understanding, I've been a longtime friend of the Locusta family, and Celeste and Roger, you know that. Okay, and it really startles me to know that your daughter, Marcy and Nagata Locusta, does not reside in Ever Beach. If my understanding that she lives in Milinani, so I'm asking. Don't speak for your daughter. I'm talking to your daughter. Yeah, I'm talking to your daughter. Do you reside in Ever Beach? Yes, I do. Okay. Okay. But so you don't live in Mililani. You don't live in Mililani with your family. Okay. That that was my concern. And then I want to know if it's um yeah that. I don't know, maybe it can be investigated or something, because that's my understanding that I know that she doesn't live in Ever Beach. Question okay. to the board. Okay. Here's, uh, All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Steve. So that should be that problem. There is a process uh, with, with a new plan. All she has to do is sign an affidavit, uh, swear under oath that she lives here. Uh, and, and the, the matter is settled, and that's all she has to do. Okay. You know, I, I, have a I have a community concern right now. Mm -hmm. Is that why a lot of people are looking over the wall at Ocean Point, looking into my home? Is that why my, yeah, is that why that people, I don't know how they're getting my home phone number because it's not published and they're calling my home and only certain people have my home phone number, nobody does. 
okay, because they can't get my number. I work for a phone company and I made it secure. Nobody can have my phone number. Now, I just wondering, and, uh, and you know, why? Because yeah. I'm tired of hearing this already. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. If uh, Mr. Chair, we're into community concerns. If you guys don't have anything constructive or just criticism, then the why why is this wrong? Let's move on. Let's move on to. You guys don't have anything worthwhile to talk about except for people that, that wish to come oh, about board members. Wow. What? Oh. Okay, community you guys have features. You potential to say, but, I, uh, but uh, criticize the board members. And I don't like you guys criticizing Mr. about it because um, Glenn? this is board business, what we're talking about. Point of order, Mr. Omelda. A concern you have. That's not a concern. Concern is something, something substantial in a community that we can deal with. It's a point of order. Okay, point of order. Point of order. Okay. Yeah, what kind of sense you guys got? Point okay, of point order. order. Okay. You're trying to disseminate okay. problems in a community. Um, Thank you. Please come up with, with issues against the, against the poor people. Recess. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get with it. Sorry. Can you hear me? I know you've been a family friend of ours, not for just my, with my auntie or whatever. This, this question was pointed to me, yes, I'm still living there. I'm 29 years old, sad to say I still live with my mom, but I come and go as I please. You may not see me there. It's not paranoia. I've been there when people have been calling the house asking questions. Just like Kimberly Pine, people want to know where she lives. You don't call her being paranoid. So, and I'm sure you know where we live because you used to live right behind us. I don't know. Okay, well, I know, your, I know your sister. Okay. So, you know, you guys used to live right behind us. You know, so that's my answer. And if you guys want to investigate, so do it. So be it. All right, next person. State your name. Dancy V. Cobbins. I just have a comment. No, no complaints, no nothing. Well, actually, I do have a complaint because I'm really new to this. I only watch you guys on TV. I've never seen all of this. I, I've been to one or two just sit in and, well, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, my, my, my comment is, um, you know, when there's things in the community, I hear you guys talking about it. You guys are a community. I mean, I'm bored. When there's things going on in a community, see my library. I didn't see anybody, but I didn't even know. I walked down the street, I see the back home, I see Kurt holding signs with friends and family. So I bought my family, because I wanted to save this library. Okay, the beaches, whatever, I don't know what you guys are talking about, the barriers. But you know what, Hubbush is beautiful. My kids can enjoy it, that, that's just my comment. I come here and, and I don't know the process, but I've just talked to two wonderful people outside because my question was, how did you guys get on this board? <laughs> that, that was my question. And they said, there's a mailing list. You know, I wanted to know where is that mailing list? I'm a voter. How come I didn't get it? Somebody missed me. So what I'm saying, yes, I put my name on that okay. paper and I check. I want to be, I want to be. You like sit where I sit. No, you know what? I, I, you I, like I sit where I sit. something interesting. I mean, look. board members, um, Celeste and um, she was trying to call point of water, nobody could hear them because of the, the, the volume <laughs> over there. Um, you know, so can we just continue on with the community concerns? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And please, please be orderly, uh, Mr. Milda, and the rest of the board members, please. Thank you. Respectful one another. Thank you. And remember, all questions 
go straight to the board, I mean to the chair. Don't be attacking our community people here. All right, thank you. Okay, I, I mean, I, I, I mean, we they voted you in. I, I had nothing to say. I, I mean, because I, I'm not on the board, but I was just wondering, how did you guys, what was the process? As a community member, I live Ever Beach all my life, okay? But to take this step forward to come to there, okay, I, I give you that, because I didn't take the step forward to make a difference. But I do in my community with my hands, my feet, and my energy. And that's what I'm saying. Thank you. Hi. Um, I'm Jerry Goff. I'm the branch manager of Apple Beach Public and School Library. And I'll make this as quick as possible. Can I hear you, Jerry? Sorry. Hear me now? No. First, I want to apologize for the air conditioning. Trust me, if I could go back there and fix it, I would, but we're told specifically to never touch that. Um, so really, I'm just here to talk about the furloughs and how that's going to affect the library system and Ever Beach Public Library in particular. Um, everything I'm going to say has not been approved yet. This is what's just being proposed. Um, from what I understand, the Board of Education had approved it, but the Library Administration <coughs> and HDAA are working out a supplemental agreement. So if it goes through, this is what's going to happen. All of the libraries will be furloughed on Wednesdays, not Fridays, like most of the other state departments. And we're going to be starting next month. Um, I think we're actually going to have three days next month. Um, and it's also very important to note that every branch is going to be closed on that furlough day. So if Eva Beach is closed because of furlough, Kapolei is closed, Mililani, Wapahu, everybody's closed. So why did they pick Wednesdays? Um, Wednesday was the only day that every single branch on every single island was open. And it was also the only day that's not affected by any holidays for the remaining of this fiscal year and all of next fiscal year. Um, also, to minimize the confusion, if everybody knows, okay, Wednesday is a furlough day, all the libraries are closed, don't come. Um, so what we're going to do here at Ever Beach, we're going to post a monthly calendar on the front door highlighting all the furlough days when we're closed and all vacation days, so you'll know. Um, we'll also possibly make some bookmarks and flyers that we'll be handing out at the library, just a reminder, and of course you can always call us and ask and we'll let you know. So how does this affect the kids? Um, Wednesdays are pretty bad because we're really busy. A lot of the kids get out of school really early and they're here at the library waiting for the parents to come up, um, pick them up or they're doing their homework or whatever it is they're doing. So if you do have little kids, and, it's, and we do have a lot of little kids, elementary school kids, um, make sure that they know that we're not going to be open that day and if you need to come get off work early to pick them up or whatever you need to do. Um, how does this affect the Campbell High School students? Um, the library will actually be open on on those days for Campbell High School during school hours. As soon as school is over, the library is closed. Um, the public cannot use it at all. Um, I also want to mention that we are open on furlough Fridays, so even though Campbell High School is closed, the library itself is open, so your kids can come on Fridays. Um, last thing I want to say was thank you again for donating. Oh, we got a lot of donations and books. A lot of money, I think it was as of last week. The library system as a whole had collected over $100,000. So, a lot, of that, and a lot of that was used to help keep us open. So, that's thank you, thank you for the information. Okay, next, state your name, please. Good evening. My name is Raylina Alcos. I'm a longtime resident of Ever Beach, and I'm here on behalf of. Our organization is called the Hawaii Ohana Forever Foundation. And I'm here to share with you something important that is precious to my heart. And it should be to everyone here because it is the youth of our community. Our foundation is having our first annual event on December the 5th, 2009. That is Saturday at the Eva Mexico Park. And this fundraiser will feature top local entertainers along with our homegrown talents from our community. This event benefits youth athletes from our community. Our event is about uniting our entire community. I'm talking about in uniting different organizations, yet we are one community. I look here tonight, we are different people, we have different opinions, we are still one community, and I do not see that here. And what is sad is I have an eighth grader, and I have a six-year-old, that's not sad. They're 
precious to me. But they asked me, Mom, where are you going tonight? And I told them I was going to go to the Ever Beach Board meeting. They asked me to come. The first meeting that I attended was last month. And I have to say, it was awful. For my first meeting, it was not a great welcome. It was not a great introduction. For whatever reason, the arguments regarding how Bush I don't know the process in which you folks feel it should have been completed. I do know it was completed. I went out there, it is beautiful. My kids, my family frequent the park. It matters that things have been being done. Same with saving our library. I have to say, I would love my kids to come. I will not subject them to this. I do not want them to have their first vision of a board working together that is bickering throughout the process. This is sad, and my advice to all of you, you need to take a step back, take a look back in your kindergarten handbook. What I learned in kindergarten, the golden rule, be kind one to another. That's all I have to say, and God bless. What, what, what time on December 5th? December the 5th, that's a Saturday from 11 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Come out and enjoy. It's for your youth athletes in the community. Um, we'll have um, inflatables, good entertainment, lots of food and crafts. Thank you. Eva Mahiko Park. There are flyers out and about, but you can reach me. I'll put my number out there. Lena Alcos at 306-4242. Again, I failed to mention, um, the Ever Beach Lions Club was also very gracious to um, co-sponsor the event with me. This is our first annual event we'd like to make it, and it's a great opportunity to give back and put back into our youth. Thank you. Rich. Thank you, board. Uh, thank you, chair, uh, board members. Uh, my name is Rich Hargrave. Of course, many of you should know. Uh, that we have in our area in uh, Ever Beach or in the fact the Leeward Coast. I also operate a, um, or sorry, in charge of a Civil Air Patrol program. Uh, Civil Air Patrol that we have running is called West Oahu Squadron located over at Kali Law. Uh, we've been out there for about uh, a little over three years right now. And what I want to do is uh, bring it to the attention of the board and the community that uh, we have a situation uh, that's been uh, ongoing uh, these last few weeks in reference to our current location. We're sharing some space with Honolulu Community College Flight School at Kali Law. Uh, we've uh, received notice recently to get, uh, or in effect, to terminate all of our CAP activities for the youth out there. Um, we're not exactly, you know, totally understanding why. It was just a complete surprise, but we're trying to uh, uh, work along with uh, our uh, elected officials, uh, Rep Pine, um, Senator Sparrow, Senator Gabbard at Coppola. Uh, also, um, we've had some uh, talks with uh, Councilman Oppo's uh, office to try to uh, turn this situation around. So if any of you have any kind of uh, input uh, in reference to our, um, well, maybe any kind of influence, I should say, in reference to maybe uh, Hololo Community College University system, uh, I'm asking for support from the board as well as community members to look at the idea of uh, uh, getting some uh, letters to these people and uh, allow them to understand what our cause is in reference to uh, taking care of the youth and this program that we have going on. Uh, there are some flyers that I brought uh, together uh, on the uh, chair on the uh, table over there uh, that will reflect uh, exactly what the issue is. Okay. Right, and um, you want us uh, from the neighborhood board to put together a letter, uh, Rich? Yes, um, actually I would prefer the uh, letter to come from the board as well as some of the community members and or businesses in the area. Uh, we're talking about uh, uh, sustaining a location for our youth out there. Uh, the youth that we deal with is 12 to 18 years old. And if you guys are not familiar with the Silver Air Patrol program, it's very similar to Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts with the exception that it's 
boys and girls that do work together and they actually learn how to fly aircraft. Uh, we have 50 kids in the program at this point uh, with the anticipation of growth and uh, actually I'm expecting in the next six months to almost double that number. So the information that you brought out here is there's the reflect on our particular uh, situation. Um, I think it was very well written and it actually shows the exact position of where we are and where we want to be. Our main goal is to maintain the facility usage. Uh, what you need to know is that we use this space once a week, three hours on a Saturday morning uh, for these kids to come out. And I'll tell you, it's something that the kids really <laughs> love doing and want to be there. They're actually learning leadership skills responsibility, um, discipline, as well as uh, safety features. Okay, Tom, then Celeste. Uh, a couple weeks back, prior to the deadline to set this agenda, I had provided an email to the board secretary and to Chair Cabela requesting the very language that you will find uh, referenced in Rep Pines tonight community report and that language is, is in detail. So with that said... Thank you, Tom. Uh, with that said, I'd like to make a motion. Uh, unfortunately, it was omitted from the agenda. When I put it in writing, NCO representative, I put it in writing and it was not put on the agenda. So let's do it now. Make a motion to put the sub sub said subject matter on tonight's agenda. We need, I believe, two-thirds in the affirmative. And the motion then would be to just implement the email that everyone should have received. Okay, thank, thank you for that, Mr. Berg. Um, I'll hold on with that motion. Um, I have meetings with Mr. Rich Hargrave previous to your email, and he told me, Mr. Uh, Fidala, I did not have to put it under that. He was going to come and talk on the community concerns. So I understand your passion, so I called him yesterday to clarify what you had emailed to me. And he also said that he was going to come and talk on the community concerns. So I understand what you're seeing. Um, Tom, but I really had notif been notified by the person that we need, they need to put it on the agenda. We, we don't need to put it on the agenda? Yeah, that's what, that's what, he, that's what he, he asked to just give out the information and ask to do a support letter uh, with the whole chair and to individual. Right. Okay, what I asked for was a letter of support. If the board uh, wishes to do so, they can do that pretty much on their own. Uh, now, if, you, if the board needs to have me on the agenda to vote for writing that letter, that would be sufficient too. Mainly, my purpose was to come out and bring awareness to the community of the situation at hand. And uh, again, if you have an opportunity to pick up that uh, uh, midweek article uh, that I have on the table over there, it will give a, a, a real good overview of the situation itself and our, what we're really looking for is the support from the community residents, from the, from the board, different businesses within our community to sustain this uh, youth program in the uh, HCC facility currently as we are operating. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, question? Question? Yeah. Question, go ahead. I have a quick question. Uh, Rich, uh, uh, is, is it a site that you're concerned about or a support to keep your program alive? What is it? Uh, no, it's uh, primarily the site. The uh, program is alive. It will continue to be alive. Uh, location is what we're uh, striving for. We've been utilizing the uh, facility at Hallelujah Community College for the last three years. The, uh, what we're using is uh, office space, small office space as well as uh, use of the classroom when the school is not in operation. Uh, so we're only there three hours on a Saturday morning. So um, the reason was given that we were uh, asked to terminate our activities in their facility was due to a, um, 
uh, language uh, that was written in an agreement for the school to maintain the property that they have. So okay. we're asking uh, for the school to uh, get an amendment and or waiver to the current language that's in their agreement so we can stay and it would include CAP and or related uh, activities for aviation. So, so it's not, uh, uh, let me put it this way. Uh, it's really not a hands-on, but more of a classroom kind of a um, program that you have, or uh, I mean, do the kids go out and mess around with, with small airplanes and stuff like that, or? The kids actually learn how to fly. I have 13-year-olds that are flying airplanes. Okay. So, but the question is, the 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 hands-on, the hands-on. There's, there's a lot of sites that you can you can Glenn. direct your activities to. Glenn, you to can discuss this outside. I would like to. Uh, just have the meet the board if can call for the question if the board can support write a letter for uh, rich well, and that I way, just want to get some back get everything moving um, the, right. this, yeah. this board meeting will adjourn by 945 okay. it's already been taken two hours out of the community's time and we haven't really gone anywhere so can we please move on rich we'll, we'll, sure. we'll, we'll write a letter I mean the, the board will write a letter to support in the support. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for helping and interacting with all these young people. Uh, Rich, kids. wait. So let's have one quick question. Rich, I remember um, I do have it on one of my, my personal minutes. Didn't we you come up with this before about that area um, about um, being relocated in November? Or, or something like no, that, no. November in, 1st or something like that? If, if you take a look at the article, the article says that we were given notice to terminate activities as of 1 November. Right. But we're, currently stay, we're currently there, still there in position. However, the, uh, the assistance with the, our elected officials um, have been talking to the school, and I'm asking for additional community support as well as neighborhood board secure, uh, support uh, to obviously give us total support, letting the school know that the community has a need to have this youth program in place. Oh, because when this is brought to our attention, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think the chair had requested that our board would write a letter at that time, because that's what I got in my minutes. I mean, I was surprised that you got, got that, because it was, for my own personal minutes, um, you, this did come about, and I think the chair was supposed to have somebody write a letter. Okay. I think at that uh, time. This is my for first November. time bringing it up, so. Oh, there may have been a DOE or, or something, because this is with UH. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair. HCC, right? HCC, Celeste, um, I think there's a motion on the floor. Tom had made a motion, and there was no second, but I second that motion to write a letter in support of this program. Thank you. Mr. Chair, we had enough discussion. Can you call Thank for the you. vote? I made a motion that, that we need two-thirds so that we can vote and write the letter if we want to follow the NCO and, and the policy of the Neighborhood Commission Office. Or we just ad hoc it and wing it, and, you know, like we've been doing. Take the vote. For, for clarification, you want to put it on the agenda for a vote for write the letter? It's the only way the board... Okay, then the what letter. you should do then, instead of putting it on the agenda, your motion should state that you want the support and the vote and the letter instead of putting it on the agenda. There's no need, he just said no need to put it on the agenda. So all you need to do is make a motion for a vote and, 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 and vote for the letter and make the motion for vote for the letter and make for, um, uh, for the board. You can't vote on anything. Uh, Nola, please. Would you interject, please, Nola? Will you, will you, will you, will you square this away, please? For us to take board action, it has to be put on an agenda. If it's not on the agenda, you can't take the action. Is that correct? Right. Thank you. All right. you can do it. So, you can so we need eight votes. There's been a second to the motion. Let's move on, okay? So you want the vote to be put on the agenda tonight, correct? For tonight so that the letter can be written. Correct. They have a vacate day, yeah? This letter needs to be in now. We just privately, each of us individually, write a letter. Sandra Kaki, Tom Berg, Mary Chanel Benjamin, 
Kurt Vavella? Yes. Steve Nauer? Yes. Celeste LaQuesta? Yes. Roger LaQuesta? Yes. Kobe Lynn? Yes. Marciana Gatta? Yes. Richard Chinanis? Yes. Glenn O'Milga? Yes. So motion passes to put it on the agenda to vote to do the letter. Yeah. Tonight. Can I move to write that letter now, please? Call for the vote. I second. Oh, yeah. 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 Second. I second. Okay, get the quote, uh, get the, yeah, no, get the um, clarification for the, the letter, please. The clarification was emailed two weeks ago to both you yeah, and the yeah. secretary. No, no, I understand that, Mr. Berg. I'm talking to whoever made the motion to, yeah, I know Malia made the motion, so we're just asking clarification because people down here wants to know the qualification, Mr. Berg. Um, also, if I'm going to have a yay on that, I want to be able to see the letter previous to it being sent, you know, the draft, so that I'm okay with it because I just said yes to a letter that I'm not, I won't see. Hopefully I will. There's a motion on the floor, Chair, to write the letter of support. Second. Uh, for the vote, please. I second that. Okay, so, um, somebody call for the question. Uh, I don't know if you want to call. Thank you call for the question. Call for the question. Call for the question. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Okay, motion passes. Okay, approval. Oh, sorry. Oh, yes. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Thank you again, Chair. Um, first of all, just thank you, really. Um, when you're asking questions, really in a very mature way, you notice that the community is responding so well to you, and I totally appreciate those kind of tone of voice. But when we start demeaning people, it's nobody wants to be here. So really, thank you so much for really working together, because we really need to come together as one heart. That's basic, that's what we're here for. We're here for the community. And at the same time, too, is I just want to really, you know, acknowledge the amazing, you know, um, Senate, represent Senator um, Espero, as well as Representative Kim Pine, you know, Todd Paul, you know, and everyone that's sitting out there that's representing us, right? Because really the community has, you know, we've gone, you know, we've gone, you know, in a very amazing way with all these roads and even the parks. So thank you guys always, and also for the representatives, you know, sending down from the mayor's office, including the, the governor's office, Thank you all. You guys have all been amazing. You guys are instrumental in pushing all these projects forward for us. Mahalo. Thank you. Any more? Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And on the uh, interest of positive news, I uh, would like to make sure the community knows that after a lot of time and effort, the free wireless network across the street at the city and county park is functioning again. I'm enjoying it in here as we speak. We all know that we unfortunately lost internet access when the DOE cut it last year. I am now providing it for you for free, and you cannot hit the naked sites. Our children, when they get out of school, can go by the park, and we have six workstations always available, 15 available when the other room is open. They're all full of really great and outstanding education applications. And I want to make sure all of you know, if you're in here, you need to access the internet, look for the wireless network name free forever and if your children or you are looking for a furlough friday or a library wednesday alternative please go see darlene at the park use the computers and make me have to put more computers in the park i'd be happy to do it so thank you three four with a number F thank you f-o-u-r four three four ever Oh, oh, free as an F R E E, and then the number four, and then ever. Thank you. But you'll see it automatically. It's an open network. Okay. Any more um, community concerns and announcements? Slash announcements. Yeah, well, no, he's going to come up. Okay. Um, we're going to go with the approval of. Uh, there's any corrections to the minutes for October 8th? Yeah. Hey, I have. If I could be recognized, Board Chair Kirk Favell, I have. Go ahead. Yeah, it's going to be page five of six. 
It's going to be under Representative Kimberly Pine, and it's going to, I'd like to have it removed that the concern will be brought up again at the neighborhood board meeting concern. One, item one. The, 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 the whole thing is very vague, and then the, yeah, okay. The, the next thing uh, was page four of six under Eva Beach Sunset on the plane event. We have city department authorized the Friends of Favela to have a booth and pass out campaign material at this event. I believe that's incorrect too and should be removed. That's page four of six at the top. Eva Beach Sunset on the Plain event. Thank you. Okay, no, um, Christmas. Okay. Just to let you know that there was multiple uh, corrections on September, <coughs> September minutes, and was supposed to be put on this agenda, correct? Yeah. Okay, no, she's specifying the the, 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 yeah, she's specifying the September yeah. correction. So, did we approve the minutes at that time without even? Yeah, I was gonna yeah email. So, but did we approve the minutes for September without the corrections? Yeah. We did. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Okay, thank you. That's just a verification. Yeah, check page four or something like that. Uh, um, if any objections to uh, approving the minutes, can we just approve the minutes? Okay, go ahead. Uh, there was a Q&A exchange under Weed and Seed between Celeste and Gail with Weed and Seed, and I don't see that Q&A, the question asked, and the answer in the meeting minutes. Is, is there a way that we can at least acknowledge that there was a question asked and that the answer be included in the minutes to reflect the meeting. So, so the request is, uh, Celeste, if you could please bring that up for inclusion, we can make that uh, amendment. Okay, it was, um, who's the co-founder of the Weed and Seed? Um, I did bring it up with Gail at that time, I guess you remember, right? And she did comment that there is no co-founder of the Weed and Seed. So it was answered by Gail that day. She did clarify, and um, I hope that she's here, that there is no co-founder of the Weed and Seed. The Weed and Seed is a federal thing, so when it comes to federal, you are not a co-founder. Okay, can we approve the minutes? Excuse me, I have a, may I have a question? Just pointing for clarification, Chair. Can we, we are right now we're still voting on the minutes. You, After talk, we do you the said minutes. my name that I didn't say something. Yeah, but that's what we, we already corrected it in the minutes. But yeah, we corrected it in the minutes. you didn't say what I said. There goes that. There's two agendas. Kimberly, I, be, um, I believe that um, Kobe... I believe it was Kobe that brought up where there was um, corrections that needed to be made on the agenda and that and apparently is under yours. One of them is under yours. But but it wasn't said what I had really said, what my real concern was. Right. I, um, I, I guess the correction was to be removed, so um, you can go ahead and clarify with the chair on that. So you're removing my, anything in reference to my concern? Chair Favilla. Can, can I move to suggest that we take, it sounds like there's several corrections, if we could take each item at a time and move and, and approve them because we can't as a whole in, approve everything that was just said, I think 
we need clarification for each portion. Well, then, then what, what's going to happen if we have that much corrections so, um, on on top of this the minutes? And then I recommend that um, we we defer we defer it um, to get it amended for the next month's approval for um, the corrections. So I think we should do that. And everyone that has corrections to the minutes, can you guys please email it to Nola? so that we can have this corrected for next month's meeting. I would really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, we're moving on. Okay, I'm not sure if everybody's here, but when the <clears throat> um, loud discussions was going on, I think some people left, I'm not sure. But, but for board business, we have 2010 census here. Okay, they're gone. Okay, one more is Paul Halekipa. Okay, all right. We have, uh, I know, um, uh, yeah, we have, uh, yeah, St. Francis, yeah. Okay, all right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm not Faye Eugenio. I'm Pam Witte Oakland from St. Francis Development Corporation. And I'd like to introduce um, Jesse Wu from Stanford Car Development. Um, we're here, one, to thank the board for all of your support. A couple years ago, we came to you with a project that the sisters were proposing to build senior affordable housing in a parcel of property that's behind the old Eva Plantation Manager's home in the shopping basket. And I want to thank you for your support, and we're here to announce that we'll be breaking ground in January of 2010. And thank you. We, are, we will only be doing the senior affordable rental piece and the community center. We'll be closing on our financing this month, um, breaking ground, well, notice to proceed early January, and I invite the board to a blessing on January 21st. So invitations will be going out, but this is a save the date message for all of you, please. And if you have any questions, um, Jesse has been our project manager. He comes to us with many years of experience doing affordable housing. If you have any questions, we're here. If not, it's just a thank you for your support in all these years. Hey, Glenn, question. Uh, hi, Pam. Hey, Glenn, how are you doing? Congratulations you. on your newly elected oh, no, position. No big thing. But anyway, let me ask you one question. It's been, what, two and a half years or almost two years? Yes. That, uh, uh, if uh, there have been any changes or modifications or We'd like to revisit if there were any changes to Nothing that significant. But the only thing we've done is we've deferred on the single family and the townhouse buildings. In fact, just you want to grab that site plan? Um, originally, we had proposed to develop the entire 23 acres. And at this point, we're just developing six acres. It's only the senior affordable rentals. And I don't think anything's changed significantly. It's 150 units. Um, and we are obligated to serve incomes at 80% of the average median in families at the 80%, and we're actually be able to target rents down below that at about 60% of the average median income. So if you, if you folks are familiar with this parcel, um, the centerpiece is where the communities, the, the senior rental community is going to be. The rest of this site is going to just be left alone. We're going to do some mass grading over the whole site, but only the senior piece will be built. So before we start any of the other pieces of that project, we'll come back to the board and give you an update. I can't recall, but were there any phasing down on this project done? Phasing done? Requests to phase the project? We've decided to phase it and just do the so senior that's gonna piece be the, now. That's going to be phase one. That's correct. Have you, uh, I think our concern, main concern was the big mitigation of traffic in that area. Has that been looked into and, and what results did you guys come up with? We have reviewed the traffic demands of this project with the city and they've signed off on it. In fact, it's a senior affordable rental, so 62 and older is the age limit to even move in. And so we don't anticipate those to be folks who are going to be commuting to town and adding to the traffic on the road. Okay. L let me uh, let me ask you one more question, Mr. Chair. Okay, um, should we, hold on. Anyone else? Thank you. You know the senior homes, will it be out of concrete, or will it be out of wood, or are you, if it's going to be out of wood, are you going to have, like, um, 
firewalls or because this is a senior home so how security is that going to be for the next name? They are metal frame construction and designed to city building code and there are the appropriate fire um, protective measures incorporated in the design. Mr. Chair. Okay, go ahead, Steve. Oh, I was going to... Oh, yeah, you have to go to the microphone. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. What do you need of us? Nothing, actually. This is a courtesy. Thank you very much. I wanted to let you folks know that we're finding breaking ground. We had some um, challenges in getting all the financing together on a timely basis, and we're there, and it's just a courtesy update. But before we broke ground, we wanted to let you know. Thank Mr. you. Chair, one last question. What... Pam, what are the off-site, off-site improvements that you intend to make okay. that was required of the project? The project has been required to widen Pepper Row, and it's connecting opposite the okay. post office off of Renton Road, so we're bringing in Pepper Row from Renton to Miula, and we're building Miula from Pepper Row all the way over to Oahu, where Lincoln Village is. So those are the off-site improvements that we've building. Do you have any uh, proposal to, to put a uh, traffic light or any of those sort? No, sir, that was not merited in the traffic study that was That's done. Good. Thank you. Right. Okay, one well, quick one. I just want to let you guys know, like I said, 945, this board meeting is going to end, so uh, what, go ahead, Celeste. So what are the, um, the rent? Do you have any price ranges on the rent right now? Jesse, is it 725? The, the one bedroom is starting at 725. Including any utilities? That includes the ut utility allowance. Okay. And it is, I, I have to brag that it's a very green design project and we have solar hot water and we're working on a photovoltaic proposal to provide all of the electricity to the project through solar. Okay. Okay, okay thank you. Anyone from the community? All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Mahalo, good night. Chair, if you would, out of order, I know we had Mr. Uh, Kai I here. There's no other announcements. Could we just, it's like a five minute presentation, real quick? If the board doesn't mind, if we can get him to come up real quick and give his presentation. There's no objections? Okay. Quick, sorry um, about that. Yeah, no, no problem. Thank you uh, to the neighborhood board and Mr. Chair for this opportunity for me to address the board. I work for the Western Pacific Regional Fishery Management Council, and we were created in 1976 by Congress. We're one of eight regional councils uh, created with the Western Pacific area. We manage fisheries. Our job is to make recommendations for the management of fisheries in the federal exclusive economic zone. Generally speaking, that's three to 200 miles out, and we make recommendations for regulations for Hawaii, Guam, the Northern Mariana Islands, and American Samoa. About 10 years ago, they said that we're going to change the way we manage fisheries. We used to manage fisheries based on species, right? Pelagic species. We, we manage fisheries. You can only catch so many. There's, there's uh, quotas and everything. Well, they changed. They said they want us to manage it by ecosystems. So over 10 years or so, it was decided that, yeah, community is a part of the ecosystem. So we had to come up with a process, and it's going to be a community consultation process, where we more actively go out and engage the community to help us make decisions on managing fisheries. And it's, uh, it, it, will be, it will be an interesting, <laughs> interesting era coming up in the management of fisheries, because uh, as you guys know, I mean, this is a this is a city function. This is a, a city and county function. The neighborhood board. Well, there's also state jurisdictions along with the federal jurisdictions, and and we're tasked with figuring out how we're going to interact with all of these d different jurisdictions. And the assumption is that whatever happens on land goes into the state jurisdiction and finds its way out to the federal jurisdiction. So we need to uh, negotiate with all of the people involved and. Basically, we, we're supposed to manage fisheries and we're supposed to manage the environment for the benefit of the community. And the only way we can manage it for the benefit of the community is if we know what the community wants. So we're changing the way we manage from species to now, if we go with ecosystem, we're changing it to places. So essentially, EVA would have their own 
say specific rules that they would have up, have applied and I'm glad to see you guys got a marine and environment committee but there would be specific rules that apply to EVA that may not apply in the same way to other places yeah. so so we're entering this era of, of much more complex management of natural natural resources and uh, this is our initial foray into this uh, forum uh, community boards are part of Honolulu City and County, they don't have the same thing on other islands. So like on the big island, we have to go through a moku process, which the island is divided up into 130 ahupua, of which there are eight or 10 mokus. So we're meeting with the mokus, trying to decide what this community consultation process will be. And this is just the initial, um, initial action that we're taking is to introduce ourselves to the community boards, neighborhood boards, uh, in American Samoa and Guam in the villages and to we, we got to work with you guys to find a way that we can elicit your your participation in the management of fisheries and at the same time be responsive to what you want okay so if you have any Mr. questions this is chair question okay. um, I know that it's a matter of jurisdiction. Uh, hold on Mr. Hold on, Mr. Bilda. Um, you're not looking for any board action or anything like this is just no a, not at this point um i'm concerned I'm okay go ahead i'm yeah. concerned about about the jurisdiction between the city and the and the state now the near shore area which is you know the coastal line is, is the purview of the uh, uh dlnr right how do you guys plan to to kind of distinguish between what are the responsibilities of the of the dlnr and what you're engaged in I mean, there's got to be a lot of discussions that got got to go uh, on, ongoing discussions with the city and the state. But I think in Emma Beach, we're concerned about our environment, the ocean, the ocean, the the fauna, the uh, fauna and the flora, and we're concerned about what's happening now. So uh, we have dialogue with the DLNR on on how we're going to maintain our area in Emma Beach, from from uh, Pearl Harbor all the way to uh, Kalailoa. So I think it's a good first step, but I think we gotta get engaged in, in how we gotta how we gonna transpose this into kind of kind of a, a, a proactive environmental, so that we can take care of our ocean as well, and and goes beyond goes beyond upland and everything that comes down into the ocean. That's what we gotta be concerned about too. So I think I think we uh, you guys getting involved with the city. And I think there's a lot of questions that need to be asked, so I, I think it'd be a good engagement. Thank you. Yeah, thank uh, you. So uh, nice. If I can comment on, on uh, Mr. Uh, okay. Mogos, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the chairman of the DLNR sits on the council, and also the director of DAR sits on uh, the Western Pacific Council. So they have a hand in the way we manage the uh, federal EEZ, but because they sit on the council, we also have a direct face-to-face contact with them. So we can negotiate something, I think, I'm sure. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm with the uh, water and food um, conservation, but there was a question with our, in our um, organization, whereas the, the cages out in the ocean, you know, the moin cages and everything, once we let that go, that will weaken our local fishes because because of maybe possibility of bacteria on the fish, you know, and um, how would you guys be able to control the community's water having something like that out there? Have you guys ever checked into it? Yeah, actually the council has a policy on aquaculture and um, the policy requires uh, analysis of all the impacts that this action will have on the environment and you understand that our area of responsibility is from three to 200 miles out, okay? Cages out here are inside three miles. So they're in state waters, okay? State process for the cages is a special use permit. So they can come in with a request for a special use permit and DL and I will decide um, how, how they will allow that permit to be used. Uh, if we, whether we agree or don't agree, we can make our voice heard, but still, under the current system, state has jurisdiction. Chair, excuse me, I'm lost. Yeah. I, anyway, um, who, 
What? Anyway, uh, yeah, that's it. Um, his information and stuff is over there. Um, our vice chair, Mitchell uh, Tananis, had asked for him to come, ask him any objections. There was no objections. So that's why he's giving his presentation. Can you give us a little time to review the information? Maybe sure. come back later on and we can talk okay. about sure, it. Sure, that's, that's our plan. Right. This is just to introduce ourselves. And in fact, I gave you the, right on. our most current newsletter. Um, this is this explains our move to ecosystem-based management. Mm -hmm. This brochure, and then the way we make decisions is in this booklet. So I brought that for all of the board. If you look at it, and hopefully we can engage sometime in the future and have your input in our rulemaking. Thank you very Thank much. You. Okay. What, what, what was your name again? What was your name again? Kai Kai. Kai Charles. Oh, Charles. Oh, Charlie. Charlie. Kai Kai. All right. Okay. This is Patrick Stomper. This has to do with um, subject matter that's been on the ag this agenda and committee through years and it has to do with Mango Tree Boulevard, otherwise known as Cane Hall Road or Bill Belfort Drive. That is a, a, a Cane Hall Road that would provide connectivity between the North-South Road Corridor and the Fort William Road Corridor. So if you see on your agenda, this was covered in committee last month, asked to be for board action today. And what this East-West uh, connector was... Uh, Tom, since you're doing your presentation, can you please go up there and do the presentation for us, please? It's easier for me, yeah. Thank you. Again, I'll reference this document. This is uh, the Ever Roadway Connectivity Study, and it pleads with this community. It pleads with all of us. If, if, if any of you drive down Renton Road in the mornings, there are four schools. There's a Kamaina Kids. There's the Lanakila Baptist. Friendship Bible, Eva Elementary School, and between seven and eight in the morning, this members from that area have pleaded for help. This is a document that says, if the east-west connector road is not built, Renton Road will become an arterial thoroughfare by default. This handout of which quotes this is from last month, of which I provided for everyone here. I'd like to expedite this by thinking that uh, everybody's for connectivity, so when there's an accident, you want an alternative route. I think that's positive. We want access to the second city back and forth. If anyone takes Fort Barrett Road down to Roosevelt, there have been people asking for a police officer in the afternoon. It's that bad. We don't have a way in and out. This connective road, the east-west connective road, goes straight to the Croc Center for all of us in Eva Beach. Go straight to UH West Oahu. That's the main access so that North-South Road doesn't become overtaxed. So it all makes sense. The planners, the experts, not Tom Berg, the experts have said this. So I'm trying to advance board action to support that we have a letter submitted to all state elected officials and city council members because eminent domain, this is of city jurisdiction, uh, may require uh, both bodies uh, because uh, there's multiple jurisdictions. There's DHHL, of which it's $17.2 million portion of East West Connected Road, from my understanding, has still been delayed due to a uh, dispute, contract dispute. So with that said, we have a package. The other one is this community did not want to time and time again have to fight to keep our libraries open, and there was a mechanism to stop furloughs and the degradation of our school system. And so we had discussed that if it were in the Constitution of the state of Hawaii, we could offer this to Senator Sparrow, Rep Pine, our elected officials, what have you, for guidance that they can, they can have the legislature with two-thirds affirmative amend the state constitution, whereby, just like emergency services don't get cut in times of shortfalls, they don't cut civil defense. If we applied libraries, which are sanctuaries, and we apply our education system, that they are an exemption and given a waiver, that's item number two, that the board send a letter to the Board of Education, to our state elected officials, asking that they introduce a bill for the 2010 session, 
for advancement so that we no longer have to constantly battle and wonder if our libraries are going to get shut down. They should not be a party to the equation. That's just my take of what many members who showed up at these testimonials have been asking for, is to keep our libraries open, and it's one mechanism to do just that. And the third item, third item, uh, was that, uh, can you look on the agenda, I have the agenda with me. Oh, you, uh, thank you, Kania Road, wow. Um, coming, coming out of the beach on Fort Weaver Road, you notice that the DOT restriped. They fit in a third lane over the uh, uh, Farrington Highway overpass. Uh, there's been inquiry to do that coming back by the DOT. The DOT did the outbound three lanes in-house, meaning they used all the funds they had available to put some paint on the road and put a nice layer on. They've exclaimed that they can't do that financially coming in. A lot of you know, coming around off the H1 into Eva Beach, you're competing with that lane coming from Cunia, and it's a short distance that we have to compete to merge. With that motion, of which I proposed, the board would merely ask our elected officials, place it in their CIP, Capital Improvement Project, for bill introduction, a financial amount that we make the inquiry and follow the plan B process. Because if we want that restriping and we do nothing, the DOT has told us we don't have the money. So we gotta prod our elected officials. That's what the third motion of party is. I'd like to introduce to expect, expedite this as a package and just all three at one time, up or down, and that would be concurrence upon the remaining members present. So you can take them individually. I, I hope to get your support on this. And again, I recommend that everybody look at the Ever Roadway Connectivity Study next door at the library. It's also online. You can get this on the internet by going to the Department of Planning and Permitting website for the city and county. And you will see that the East-West Connected Road, if we do nothing, historical rented road was never meant to take this traffic. And it's gonna get worse because there is an industrial park on the end of that road proposed. You got St. Francis going on Renton Road as well. That's quite a bit of traffic. And you even have a couple other developments going on there with e e uh, e um, uh, EAH. So you add all that that we've, this board's already approved of, those three developments on Renton Road, imagine without the East-West Connected Road going back and forth between North-South and Fort Weaver, it's gonna be pretty bad for those folks. And I think they're asking for our help. They have been for a long time. And again, eminent domain would be with the requisite that whoever, if Ho'opili D.R. Horton gets approval to reclassify from ag to urban and gets approval to develop Ho'opili, they would have to pay back whatever the state or city expended to build that road of eminent domain in the contract, reimburse the taxpayer. Right now we need that road so bad we can't wait for the State Land Use Commission to make a decision. We can't wait for, if it even gets approved, Ho'opili said that's not on their agenda for the, for the, for the short term. That's a long road out. We're talking 20 plus years they would ever even decide to build that thing. So that's unacceptable, board members. Please support the package. Thank you. And uh, Hawaiian Homes. Uh, right now, um, since you know you submitted your um, your paper, um, can we just go into the, the information and, and gathering kind of thing so that we can get out of here? Briefly, um, yeah. the second page of my report has a Kapolei Cancer Self Help Group that's forming in West Oahu. Uh, we don't have a cancer uh, self help group, and if anyone's interested in this, they can contact my office. Or there's a number 685-1215, 685-1215. Uh, the big issue I'm working on, which you may know, is the Friday furlough situation. I've been appointed the vice chair of the committee in the Senate looking into this, and I am right in the center of the debate on whether we can take the 17 Friday furloughs and reduce them. I don't think we're going to be able to eliminate them, but unfortunately, if they stay as it is now, the plan, the 17 lost days will make us probably the lowest in the nation and in the industrial world. Japan and Germany, for example, 
has 240 days of education. Their 240 to our 161 would give us two-thirds of what they're doing. Korea 220, China 209, Canada 200, New Zealand 197. You get the point. As we reduce the days, our children's education suffers, their future suffers, and ultimately the state of Hawaii suffers. So we only have a small window of opportunity to deal with this matter before the end of the year. Because if we don't deal with it by the end of the year and wait till next session, like some people are saying, um, next session is gonna be done by May, the school year will be done in June, and thus we will be labeled the state with the worst instructional classroom days. So that's something still going on, we're still working on it. Um, there are six parties that need to agree. The Senate, the House, Board of Education, Department of Education, HSTA, and Governor. Uh, right now, four of those six segments are moving in the right direction. We need to work on the Governor and the House of Representatives. It is still possible, but each day and each week, that window of opportunity grows smaller and smaller for a special session. And hopefully, um, I've come up with a plan, $25 million, $10 million from the Hurricane Relief Fund, 10 million from federal stimulus part B money, and 5 million from the rainy day fund. That would give us back five school days. Then we'd ask the union and the governor to reopen the contract, and one idea that's been floated is to take the Wednesday and the Friday schedule, which they currently have, and switch them. And by switching them, that would give us five more days. So between the 25 million and reopening the contract, there's a potential plan to at least get back 10 of those days. I see that I'm being asked to complete, so at this time, if there's any questions, or feel free to, to call my office if there are any. Hey, can I have a quick one? You know, uh, Senator Espero, every month, the revenues what that was projected hasn't been hasn't been come to fruition. Oh, the question, the question. question is, we're going to rely on on monies or taxpayers taxpayers base as the sole responsibility of generating income to pay for the state's bills. Now you we're reading all these uh, you, you know uh, storm and and rainy day and all this and that. Yet there's $350 million sitting out there for the rail from the GTE tax. And you guys haven't talked about it yet. You guys want to raid the public, the public and all its incentives that they put aside for it. You guys want to raid, but there's $350 million that are sitting in there in, in the GTE tax. And you guys haven't talked about that. Uh, yes, we have. May I, may I answer him, Chair? Last legislative session, there was a proposal to take money from the rail fund. Uh, but the voters and the legislation, the law, says that that money must specifically be used for the rail, of which the majority of the people recently voted and said that they want to build the rail. Then we received a letter from Senator Daniel Inoy during the legislative process. And in his letter, he said that if we continue to look at the rail fund, it could seriously jeopardize receiving any federal funds. So that was on the table, Glenn. It, it hasn't been ignored, and it will probably be on the table again. Let's follow up, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, um, Senator. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, my question is, could you, um, north, um, the east-west connection road that um, Tom is bringing up, um, is, it, um, is it really bad for Rent and road, because knowing that rent and road is just a substandard road. Now, will there be heavy traffic going in there without an east-west connection road? So I just basically want to know that because the, the residents there don't deserve heavy traffic there. Well, when Kapolei Parkway opens up, and Kapolei Parkway will open up either January, February, or March of 2010. Uh, we're real close to getting that whole roadway open up. That will help the situation in terms of getting people from Eva Beach to North South Road, and they will just cross over Renton and not use Renton. Down the road, Renton Road will be heavily used, probably as the whole area develops, but it's imperative that we have to see what does happen above um, 
of the villages and the Ho'opili because we're competing with every community in the state. Um, Ocean Point, for example, would like to continue the road to go right through through to um, Kalailoa and connect to the north-south road. Um, Tom wants to widen Kunia. The Waipahu board wants to change that intersection of Waipahu Road. And it's a matter of prioritizing these projects. Uh, we just have a little money and we have a large amount, so it's an important roadway, the east-west collector road. However, where it is on the priority list, I don't think it's going to be as high as some of the other needs. Thank you. Thank you. And Senator, you got your invitation for the uh, Yes, right? I did. Thank you. Okay. I have one over here for Rep. Kimberly Blaine. If you guys could be the judges for our party, it'd be nice. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. If you do have a meeting next month, I will be in Virginia. My son will be graduating from Officer Candidate School with the U.S. Marines. Thank you. Thank you. Right on. Okay. okay, I'll be brief, and since he went on furloughs, I, I won't go into that area, but I do want to thank Senator Sparrow for helping to lead the charge for our community. Uh, he's doing a great job. Um, I do want to focus on a, a section that we've been working really hard on, and to let you know that the people of Ella Beach has been wronged by Star Market and, and Times. I very rarely come out very strongly against a company I, I try to stay out of the private sector as much as possible. But for, for months, when we first heard that Star Market was closing, without any notice to the community, uh, we called Star Market to say, what are your plans? And they said, well, we're selling to Times. And so a lot of the people in the community, when they heard that, even the media that shared that message, uh, they felt, okay, there's a grocery store, we're fine. But what was going on behind the scenes, unbeknownst to all of us, was that Times was planning to sell to CBS because they'd get more money. Now this significantly, as all of you know, this impacts our community in a very big way. I have many people who are elderly who are saying that they depended on that place because it was close to their homes. For whatever reason, they couldn't get efficient transportation. I have elderly saying that Star Market was perfect because the handy van would go there and they could keep their colder items like ice cream and other necessities uh, chilled in a matter of time. I didn't know that sometimes it takes up to three hours in a handy van just to go down the street. Uh, the, the, the things that people have suffering are suffering. I cannot as an elected official advocate for anyone to ban any particular company but I think that it is right that the people of Eva Beach share with their families throughout the state of Hawaii how times treated us as if we were insignificant. Many people will suffer as a matter of this. And as you can see by the parking lot in Foodland, we are not, we're not even given sufficient time to prepare. So as soon as we discovered two days ago that it was official, it was rumored that CVS was going to buy it, but as an elected official, I cannot assume that a rumor is true unless it, and share it with the community unless it's confirmed by the owners who only officially did it two days ago. So as soon as we officially got the word from CBS that they will be the new owners, we are immediately trying to get together with the, the owners of Foodland. We're going to be really monitoring that parking lot to see what we can do to make things easier for everyone. They're hiring a parking attendant, and this is where all of you come in. If you have any suggestions how to make this process better, please let me know, because I will propose it uh, to Foodland. And everything else is in my report. That was the most important thing. Any questions? You know, um, uh, Representative Point, in the, in the early 90s when um, Foodland, and I, I guess it comes down to economics, because you know, the estate of James Campbell was stickler on, on, on rental. That's why Foodland moved down the street. Now what I heard is CV, CVS is going to put a, put a, a lounge drugs there. That's not even appropriate for our area. What we need is another shopping center, another food, food uh, basket. 
so so we got we got to struggle to keep a food basket there mm -hmm. and not, and not uh, put anything over there who, whoever they feel like putting but we got we got to advocate for for a food market so that the people cannot don't have to go to longs and impact i mean impact food land and, and drive all the way down there i think uh we got to advocate for that I, I agree with you. Um, unfortunately, CVS slash Moms already bought the property, so the next step that we're trying to do is to really engage them and put pressure on them to put more food there than the other things that are already at the longs down the street. Yes, Tom. Great, Tom. Chair. You have uh, in your report something that when Breen Harimoto was here with the Board of Education, I was, I was going to take up with him. And I am have to take it up with you because I can't wait another month on this. It has to do in her report. The James Campbell High School eight classroom building of which the legislature funded a couple years back, the Department of Education has decided they're not going to fund the full eight classrooms. It was supposed to be a two-story building. I believe it's going to be five, four, single story. So with that said, we have an opportunity as a community to lobby the Department of Education, lobby the Board of Education, and demand because it's their decision. Lump sums. Look at the Attorney General's letter of whereby the Department of Education could fully restore the eight classroom building destined that the legislature approved of, the governor approved of, and now the money's short. It's not enough. We can make a difference community together. And I'm recommending, Chair Favela, that this be placed on next month's agenda so that we can, as a board, take action to support and lobby, even petition the Department of Education to build the eight classroom building. Because you know what, gang? If they don't build it, this go around, does it look like there's any plans to finish it? All right, anyone else in the community? Celeste, you had a question? Yeah, I did have a question. Mm -hmm. um, James Campbell High School, the, um, the sound monitors that's on the roof, um, mm -hmm. has anybody updated on that? Tom, were you supposed to, uh, the, um, Oh, the noise monitors. Right. I mean, since then we have. John, no did you update. want to talk about the noise monitors? And if um, how are we going to get um, air conditioning for the children in Ava Beach? I, I you okay. gave us information about that, right? You're going to look into it, right? Just right. Okay. Yes, um, that, that monitor is one of two noise monitors that we had in place uh, in the flight path of the aircraft. The other one is at the waterfront at Pualoa. Both noise monitors, um, they, they recorded uh, near 60 dBA, which is the federal limitation, so they recorded just under that. Uh, so we're waiting for the next readings to come in because we feel like uh, the readings we got the first time, uh, I, I think anyone who lives in the flight path, especially near you know, the flight path, uh, it seems like it's louder than that, so we, maybe we caught it during an off time. The next reading we're gonna get in is gonna record the holiday traffic, it's gonna record some other things um, when the runway's been closed. So we're waiting for the next reading to come in on those monitors. Thank you, go ahead. Okay, my name is Cynthia. Hi, this Cynthia. Is, hi. Uh, I just wanna say, I heard you say they're gonna hire a parking lot attendant. Uh, we don't need a parking lot attendant at Foodland. We need more parking lots. What, what is this attendant going to do other than it's going to cost more money? What is he going to do? Uh, direct traffic? Uh, no. The, the problem here. I sit right under the flight pattern and I have for the last 20 years and it does not bother me and I'm more than proud to hear fighter jet airplanes going over my house making the most
Aloha, I'm Representative John Rui Karamatsu, and I want to talk a little bit of how we can achieve peace within. I'm here at the Hawaii State Capitol in a conference room where we do a lot of our important decisions for the state of Hawaii. In our hearing, sometimes emotions can flare and there could be people upset. However, we can still stay positive within ourselves and spread positivity to others despite the negative situation around us. Some of the things I like to do, for example, is take a short break and take a walk, a brief exercise. Maybe it's walking up and down the stairs or taking a short walk to get, grab a cup of coffee or maybe your favorite pastry or dessert. I also like to listen to music when I take a walk or do a brief exercise. And this helps to keep me in a positive level. For example, happy tunes or a smooth ballad to relax our soul inside of us while we look into ourselves in the negative situation we was in so we can come back and come back more positive. And that's what I like to do. And we can apply this at work or at home. Despite our negativity around us, we can still come back positive. Thank you so much. Aloha.